And if you're coming down the stairs, just do it, do it slowly. It's fine. We just want to look out for everyone. Be cautious. Good morning, everyone. Would like to call this meeting back to order and do a quick roll call of council members. Councillor Wright. Good morning. Councillor Knack is here in one piece. Good morning. Fully secured in the chair. Right. Councillor Prince Bay. Good morning. Councillor Stevenson. Good morning. Councillor Paquette. Good morning. Councillor Tang. Good morning. Councillor Hamilton. Good morning. Councillor Rutherford is here. Yep. Good morning. Councillor Salvador. Good morning. Councillor Cartmel. Good morning. Councillor Rice. Good morning. And Councillor Jans. Good morning. Good. Everyone is here. Before we go into our first item at 9.30, Madam Clerk, can you kind of walk, walk us through? On the, yeah. on the agenda? Yeah, so if I can just make sure I have the same list as everybody else. So what still is remaining to be dealt with on your agenda, starting with 6.3 and 6.4. Right now, those items are both second this morning. Uh, Council still has to deal with item 6.9, the 102nd Avenue LRT pedestrian crosswalk. 6.10, River Valley uh, Planning Modernization Phase 2 update and 611, the review of uh, policy C607. There are still a number of bylaws that have been laid over since May uh, 9th and May 24th. The first one is 74, which is amendments to the procedures and committees bylaw. That's where we're asking you to set up the council code of conduct subcommittee. 75, which is the emergency management bylaw amendments. 76 is related to remote participation by council members. And your first item today is 77, which is the amending bylaw for the conduct of transit passengers. There are five motions pending, one of which um, was made three meetings ago. Then there's a few in private items that are still to be dealt with. 92, regional update. 93, festival update. 94, Edmonton Police Commission recruitment process update and 9-6, agencies, boards, and commissions. That's a verbal presentation. And I do believe there are a number of notices of motion that people would like to be making today. Okay. All right. So I would really encourage all of us that we uh, please focus our questions on the, uh, on the topic that would be at hand when we discuss this. In this case, our first item is the... Uh, uh, is the 7.7. Uh, seven. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm not able to click in right now, but I was just wondering if we could make 9-6 uh, time specific for Friday. Um, that would just help um, for some external partners who are coming forward to, to coordinate their time. 
Nine six is agencies, boards, and commissions appointment updates. And and clerks could maybe help me remember it, that it is nine six and not nine four. That is correct. It is absolutely nine six. Nine four is a completely unrelated item. This was laid over from May twenty fourth. Uh, council has recently increased the number of members of the Edmonton Police Commission. There are currently two vacancies, and we're looking to get going on that recruitment. But they, okay. are, they are not related items and should not be dealt with together. Okay, so everyone okay with having 9.6 first item on Friday? Can you move that motion, Councillor Stevenson? Uh, yes, so moved. Second, Second by Councillor Hamilton. Please vote. I mean, yes, Madam Clerk. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. We're just sending the vote out. We're just waiting for one more vote. We have all the votes. Okay, display the votes, please. That is carried. Thank you so much. All right, so now we go into our first item. 7.7, uh, .7, bylaw 19983, amending bylaw 8353, conduct of transit passengers bylaw. And I will again stress that please focus our questions on the bylaw as we debate this and uh, discuss this. Uh, Mr. Corbel, do you have a presentation? I don't have a presentation, just a few opening remarks. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Your Worship, and good morning, Council. So the proposed amendments to the conduct of transit passenger bylaw will add an additional offense dealing with inappropriate behaviors on transit property that have the effect of interfering with the intended use of transit and negatively affecting perceptions of safety. Uh, the amendment uh, strengths, strengthens existing rules by confirming explicitly that inappropriate use of transit property such as remaining in transit stations, vehicles or platforms for long periods of time for, for purposes unrelated to the use of transit is not permitted. Uh, the amendment also confirms that the use of illicit substances is not permitted in transit property. Uh, and while illicit substance use is regulated federally, visibly using it in public spaces such as transit property interferes with the safe and comfortable enjoyment of these spaces and is not acceptable conduct within transit facilities. So what it does is it, it becomes, this, this addition of, of, of this offense makes it, you know, very uh, clear, um, and those are most of the concerns we've heard about from uh, from transit riders who are feeling unsafe. And so it addresses specifically those concerns. I just want to comment very quickly on, on ticketing. Because it is an, ad, uh, an additional offense, there is the ability to ticket. But much like we've done in many other um, uh, bylaws uh, and, and offenses, and I've give, I'll give you some recent examples, the aim here is not to ticket. The aim, the operational aim here is to use this to keep the places safe, not to issue a bunch of tickets. And, and we've taken a similar approach with school zone speed limits, playground zone speed limits, uh, 40 kilometer hour residential default speed limits, tree protection bylaw, and the waste bylaw with uh, the new carts and bins. So that would be the approach operationally we would take. And I did confer with uh, Chief McPhee uh, on that as well. So. Um, just wanted to make that clear and, and certainly it, it may be an issue of discussion. So that's it, Your Worship, and happy to take questions. Good. Thank you so much. Uh, Councillor Rutherford exempted this, so Councillor Rutherford, go ahead for questions. Yes, uh, thank you so much. I have a few questions. Um, so I guess the first one I wanted to start with is around you know, the difference between when something's in a bylaw and then the standard operating procedures, because so for example, when we had the, the hate symbols, we, we didn't explicitly outline everything within it, but the, the understanding was there would be a standard operating procedure that would outline some of those and provide that nimbleness. So I I'm, I'm guess I'm wondering why that wouldn't, because this, to me, this bylaw, even before this amendment, had ability to, to move people along and to, to, it had inappropriate behavior within there. So I guess I'm just, on, I'm not clear as to the why this is needed now. 
Yeah, so Councillor, you're, you're absolutely right, and I want to make it super clear that w without this bylaw, we, we have the ability to enforce inappropriate behaviour. It, it, it really is about the explicit clarity of it uh, on specific issues based on some of the concerns we've heard. And I'll just see if, if Ms. Carrie Helton McDonald wants to expand on that. Uh, thank you. I agree. I think um, the feedback we've heard from people, particularly around the uh, drug poisoning situation, is that there wasn't explicit language in the bylaw kind of being very clear about our expectations. So it's in that spirit that it was... Uh, written, but totally hear your point. Okay, um, so I guess, again, I, I still am confused as to the why now. Um, because I have a motion that gave direction to make this section, specifically for this section, to be more explicit, but also to look holistically at the whole thing in terms of stuff like ticketing and how we're doing that. So I guess I'm I'm just confused as to, that's what do back August 22nd. So that was already in the works. Yeah. And, and that will work will carry on, Councillor. Uh, why now, quite frankly, is because a lot of the public, a lot of the comments we get are, you know, can you reinstitute the loitering bylaw, which mm -hmm. we are not proposing, uh, but we think that this would address some of those specific concerns. That That is the why it was, a, yeah. you know, and essentially, we had, we had told council back in January they could consider putting this on the agenda. They chose not to, and then we got your motion, and that work is carrying on. And then we asked again, because we were coming with a transit update, and this yeah. time council chose to put it on the agenda. So, yeah. But yeah, it's a very valid point, um, and, and, but we just... Because I, I do think it goes a little bit counter. So for I, one of my intentions behind my motion was to take away... Um, because oftentimes that unconscious bias leads to discretionary practice. So we need to make more explicit uh, things so that there's less discretionary. And when I read, you know, engaging in behaviors or activities related uh, while engaging, you know, remaining on transit properly while engaging in behaviors or activities other than related to using transit, I feel like that leaves a lot of discretion. Right, and I, I also don't understand why it's visibly using control, controlled substances as opposed to just using controlled substances full stop, right? So I, I, I have so many questions about that, but it seems to me that, that that line A still leaves a lot of discretion. Can you speak to that? I, I think it, it, it does leave some discretion, but the difference between what you're talking about here and, you know, we'll, if we compare to the loitering bylaw, for example, is there still needs to be some behavior that needs to be taking place for peace officers and EPS officers to engage. Loitering didn't need any outward uh, kind of behavior for, for them to approach an individual and start asking for a warrant, you know, uh, you know, ID and see if there's warrants, that kind of thing. So that's where, that's where the loitering bylaw. Okay, because how does how does the this, the number one that was already in the bylaw that says no person may while on transit engage in behavior that reasonably be expected to interfere with the safety or comfort of others? How is that not already in there? Like, I guess yeah. I don't understand what two a augments to that well, or similar, what other authorities it gives yeah so similar to to your comment is is the desire for some explicit wording so that's what we provided and so uh, EPS but I don't example, I would say that then I, I would hope that when my my bylaw does come back on the 22nd that it's more explicit than this because this to me is still very discretionary I would I would contend so I'm, I'm out of time thank you thank you Councillor Rutherford Councillor Knack thank you Mayor so he um, so, appreciating the answers to the questions, I, I guess I'm, is this just sp supposed to make people feel good? Like, and, and I don't mean that to be so diminishing to it, but it sort of feels like, well, we've heard from the public that want this, we're writing it in, but it doesn't seem to actually fix any of the problems. So I guess that's my bigger concern, is that, what does this actually do? I, I would say it's another, that, that's not the intent, to make yeah. feel, people feel good. It is to address a specific concern that constantly gets raised, um, which is not ex explicitly um, in the current bylaw, and so it provides clarity. Um, and it's another tool in the toolbox for enforcement officers to use, so. 
so I guess the question, because to the answers to Councillor Rutherford, we heard that, that point one does allow us to do that. If somebody was, was using an illegal substance in the stairwell in the hallways, which is where, let's be honest, where a lot of that's happening. I mean, I was in just recently and, and saw it again. Um, the bylaw as it written today would allow somebody to deal with that. Uh, and I mean, I'm not gonna nitpick. If, this is, if you wanna have this in the bylaw, we'll do it. But I don't actually see how this then changes the outcome. It, we, if we had the same ability to have someone removed from a hallway or a stairwell, what's gonna change after this bylaw is approved? And if suddenly we are going to start removing people, I, I might ask why we weren't doing it before, that's a separate question, but then also where would we be displacing people to? Because it's not gonna end the problem, it's just gonna be displacement of the problem. Yeah, and I would say that what, what's different about this compared to, I mean, the, the, the uh, drug use is one thing, but the just hanging around the station um, when you're not using transit is another thing we're trying to avoid here. Right mm -hmm. now, we can't stop people from just hanging around the station if they're not using transit. That would be additive in this bylaw and one of the major concerns we've heard from, okay. from riders. So that's your, uh, that's your added piece. Yeah, so it's not, I, w I wouldn't focus on the drug use part of it. It does reinforce that for sure, but I would focus on the other, the other part of it that, uh, and it was the best balance we could find from, we, we were pretty sure that we didn't want to bring back a loitering bylaw. Uh, throughout the entire city. This is focused just on transit stations as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it does, you know, if you're not using transit, it's not a safe place. It's mm -hmm. not a place we want you to be hanging around. And I say that to Councillor because some of the criminal acts we have seen on in transit, up until the point where that act became, the, the actions became criminal, so a lot of those folks were just hanging around. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would, you know, use as an example the, the tragic incident of, of uh, the person being pushed onto the tracks at yeah. the health sciences station. Uh, two minutes be or even 30 seconds before the act happened, they were not committing offense. Yeah. But with this bylaw, they would, depending on what they were doing, if they were on, not riding the LRT, they would be com committing an offense. Okay. Yeah, and I think this addition uh, with the visible use of drugs that makes it very clear for our TPOs that they have jurisdiction to take action on, on that piece. So were they uncertain before that? Is that why we didn't see necessarily as much enforcement in the uh, uh, they, they, I don't think they were uncertain, but a lot of the, the social media comments from leaders mm -hmm. don't help when enforcement was, and, and does cause doubt in some of uh, the peace officers in law. And I won't speak to EPS, but that has been difficult sometimes when okay. people have been doing what we've asked them to do and enforce the regs we've asked. And then there's been political commentary about how, how it was enforced and that doesn't help. Okay. The last question I have, uh, and appreciating that this is a, still a bit of a long-term thing and I, uh, you know, I've raised it a few different times over the years and I think Councillor Jans has brought it up again. I can't remember, was it last meeting or recently, around actually trying to activate our transit centers. I mean, um, I still, desperately want us to just lease out any space for a dollar to coffee shops, to food trucks, to I, I don't care who, um, to start bringing more people and more activity. And, and so my only worry then is because I do hope that is the end goal and we can activate these spaces, is that by putting this in here and allowing a coffee shop to set up, do we actually prevent that ability to at some point activate these spaces because if somebody goes down to a transit center to grab a cup of coffee because we have a new vendor there, they're not there for transit purposes, but they're there as eyes on the space. And does this have an unintended consequence of preventing us? No, I don't believe it does, Councillor. In fact, the, the quite the opposite. The intent here is to uh, help entice some of those vendors to come back into the system okay. where, and they're not comfortable coming into the system now. Okay. I know of one that I see regularly at Clareview that is doing okay, but yeah. Okay. Uh, the, it's the opposite intent and we can certainly make that clear. Okay, yeah. I'm out of time, thank you. Thank you, Councillor uh, Knack. Councillor Stevenson? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I have, uh, you know, questions that echo Councillor Rutherford and Councillor Knack's uh, line of questioning as well, but I did want to start um, just to confirm uh, what work administration has done in terms of outreach to EPS uh, to ensure that this is what they want to see, that it's workable for them. Yeah, Councillor, we worked uh, together with them on the specific wording and the collaboration as well as the operational um, 
uh, implementation of this, and and that's why I mentioned that you know, Chief Chief McPhee and I had consulted. So the the enforcement approach would be similar to those here in the city, uh, as well as EPS, and and they helped uh, consult with us uh, on putting the bylaw together. They actually helped drafting as well. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, so this will meet their needs because again, in conversation with with EPS members who are in the transit system, um, they did find the the lack of specificity in the current wording to be quite challenging. So, you know, I certainly certainly appreciate two B. I think that that provides excellent clarity. Um, but I do, sorry, my I don't know if my sound. It sounds like it's echoing. I apologize. Again, I do just wonder. So some, some, some challenges I see. So again, what I, what I heard from you, Ms. Plouffe, which I really appreciate is it's focusing on behaviors rather than people. And that's, you know, ultimately what we want our bylaw to achieve. I'm struggling with something like the pedway systems, which, um, you know, are not pay fair, you know, you don't have to pay a fair to use um, some of the, the underground passageways downtown. And many people use those not while using transit, right? They're just using them to walk through. And and again, I just worry um, what what discretion may lead to uh, stereotyping and stopping certain people and not others uh, who may just be passing through the spaces and not using it for a transit purpose. So I might ask Ms. Jacobson to step in, but my understanding uh, is that the Pedway system is not tied to our transit property. I, I mean, it's tied to, but it's not considered transit property under this bylaw. But Ms. Jacobson, I, um, you might want to jump in on that one. Uh, you're absolutely correct. The, the Pedway system where it's not actively part of the transit system wouldn't be captured by this bylaw. Uh, but. But I assume that that's where a lot of the challenges we see occur, correct? And and if not, then couldn't we just be, you know, enforcing fares, uh, you know, in the actual transit area? I'm just wondering how that will be operationalized then. Well, I think we, I mean, we also have other tools apart from the transit Con the, the, this transit bylaw, we've got public places bylaws, we've got other tools in our tool belt that the peace officers and EPS uh, can, can use to, to oversee uh, and enforce behavior. So I'm not sure if Mr. Jones uh, has maybe uh, something to add there. Yeah, I think although the, the Pedway system isn't necessarily part of the transit property, there are places that are transit property that are not um, past a fair required space. And so this allows us to deal with, so I'm thinking one of the, one of the areas that I can think of is the, uh, the Belvedere bus shelter. Uh, it's separate, doesn't require, uh, you know, proof of payment. Um, even Belvedere station itself, there's space inside there that is not beyond, um, you know, the proof of payment area. And so this provides some additional tools and clarity uh, as as Ms. Plouffe has said, you know, we use this in combination with the public places bylaw, but certainly, you know, the specific mention of drug use, et cetera, allows um, our peace officers uh, some additional tools to, to use to, uh, to make sure that those spaces are, uh, are sort of safe for everyone. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and again, just in our previous conversations, I, I, I understand that, you know, the TPOs will be working uh, in all instances to, to connect folks, even if they're moving them along, to connect them to services as much as, as possible. And then just wanting to follow back on the question of ticketing, um, I'm wondering, is it, are there any ways of um, capturing both interactions and um, tickets that that may fall under these new provisions just just so so we can be aware of that um uh also you know just just any feedback we're receiving from members of the public in terms of how how these new um abilities are being applied yeah we can certainly do that counselor through our, our regular updates on transit safety both by memo and at some point i would say we, you know we'll come forward for another update in council as well perfect thanks very much Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Councillor Salvador. Uh, thank you, Marsohi. Um, yeah, so I just had some questions around, well, I guess the, the inevitable displacement of, of folks, uh, recognizing that, 
the intention is to move people through the system. Um, I just, I want to make sure that there is sort of a clear, clear connection to, to supports and services. So I'm trying to understand what that looks like. Yeah, so as we've described several times, Councillor, you know, the, the, the key aim always is to find the connection. Um, but we can't force people to that connection. We, we you know, it's not, we, we can't force them to go to the connection. In the absence of them not wanting to be connected when it's offered, we would still, we're, it, the, the system will be safer if they're not in the transit system. So it's not a 100% guarantee that they will be connected. Uh, but much like, um, you know, when we close the, the LRT station when transit is stopped running, it's not a safe place for them to be. Um, and so uh, we will always do our best to make the connection, but I, we, I can't guarantee that because I can't force them to, to accept that connection. Right. And I, I guess I just think about, I think the number was like... 52 times naloxone was was uh, was given over a six week period, and I honestly I think about the lives that were saved um, in in that type of response, and I'm just I'm trying to understand where those people are going to go and and what the potential consequences would be. Um, yeah, that's that's kind of where I'm at, uh, and I guess I'll also ask about. The level of discretion, you know, when we're talking about people hanging around a station uh, when not using transit, I guess how how will that be determined when it's too long versus you know an appropriate amount of time? Um, that that seems like a pretty wide window. I think Mr. Jones could probably best speak to that. I think I would. Uh, yeah, thanks very much for that question. I think I, I would tie that back to the notion that we're looking for specific behavior. So it's not a time limit. It's not like, well, you've been hanging out for 15 minutes, so it's time to go. It's more of a, you know, is is this behavior problematic? Is it causing, um, you know, the, those feelings of uh, uneased or unsafe uh, spaces causing that for other users of the transit. So that's what we'd be looking at is the behavior more than a specific time limit. Right. Okay. Um, great. Well, I think the rest of my questions have been answered because uh, I had questions around why, why part A would be necessary just given uh, the current context of the bylaw as it stands today. Uh, but that's been answered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Salvador. Councillor Wright. Thank you, Mayor. So we, um, my question um, relates more to the, to the fines. Um, so if it is determined that a, that a fine is going to be issued and um, the individual is unable to pay, sort of what happens further down the line um, if they were to be um, contacted, you know, and the, and the fine wasn't paid? Um, is there further enforcement action? Mr. Jones, do you want to take that one? Um, I was going to ask perhaps if uh, Ms. Jacobson had um, some process-related uh, issues. I mean, certainly, um, I'm not sure if this one would go to warrant or not. Uh, Mr. Jones, if I can uh, just help out with these ones. So Please. when when these tickets are issued, they do fall under provincial jurisdiction in terms of the processes. So this particular ticket um, would go if the fine, if the ticket is not dealt with, the person ends up being convicted in absence and the fine just remains outstanding. How that's collected on down the road can be a, a complicated process, but the fine would essentially just remain there waiting to be paid. Okay, so they, there wouldn't be a, a summons issued for their arrest or anything like that where they would be then subsequently picked up? In most cases, no. So in, in with these types of tickets, there always remains that option, but an officer would deliberately have to choose to issue that type of ticket, which they would only do in very exceptional circumstances where it's absolutely warranted. The default approach would simply be that it would go through the simplified process. Okay, and then with, with the tickets that have been issued, I guess, um, under this bylaw currently, um, what, what is sort of the collection rate? As, as, is there a lot of outstanding tickets? I don't have a number for you right off the top of my head. We could find that. There are some outstanding, um, but it, it's, not, it, it's not terribly significant. But I can look into a specific number. We just have to get back to you with that. And are there other options besides making the, the cash payment of $250? 
Unfortunately, no, that is a, a bit of a gap in the provincial system that the fine payment is only dollar based. That's the only thing the court can handle. Um, hopeful that over time there will be some reforms to that system. But right now, once that ticket is issued, a dollar fine is the only option. Yeah, and if I could just if I could just add to that, I know that there are ways within that provincial system to set up kind of a fine payment so that it doesn't have to be $250. If you go in and say, yes, I will pay for this, but I don't have the money, can I do $10 a month or whatever? There's room for negotiation with the, the courts. But just want to emphasize, Councillor, that the aim here is not to hand out hundreds of tickets. That is not sort of the operational intent here. Okay, yeah, and, and I, I think the focus should be more on getting the people the resources that they need to so that these behaviors don't continue. So, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Wright. Councillor Hamilton. Thank you. Um, I appreciate that a lot of concern has been voiced about um, vulnerable people in our transit system who uh, may be um, unintentionally um, affected by this, but there, we have adequate resources or we've, we've staffed up in other areas in order to help those people who are just really struggling, like with the, the uh, COTT teams, right? Yes, Councillor, and, and, and I think it's a really good point to emphasize here. The, 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 uh, the people uh, that we would hope this bylaw be applied to are not the vulnerable people. Mm -hmm. They're the criminal element that is preying on vulnerable people in many cases. And when I read that by the bylaw, especially um, uh, part 2A, that to me, and, and forgive me, um, Councillor Nax talking about the potential for enterprise in our uh, transit system, but that's already present, isn't it? Uh, correct, but uh, in terms of enterprise, Correct, but, yeah. but people are wary to come into the system given the current safety elements. Yeah. But in part because the people who are operating a business are not doing it legally and they're not doing it safely and they're making it dangerous for other people. Correct, I, I understand your meaning now, yes. Yeah, um, I've, and I've heard rumors, um, and forgive me for this, uh, that there are street level gangs that have adopted entire transit stations. I believe so. Mr. Jones, do you want to comment on that? Uh, certainly we're seeing that type of presence and um, uh, and it has been a noted concern in, in a few of our stations, yeah. Have your officers found that they are familiar with the repeal of the loitering bylaw and exactly what they are allowed to do in transit stations and what they can be moved along for? Certainly our officers have uh, heard those comments that uh, it doesn't matter what we do, you can't kick us out anymore. Um, so whether that's an adequate interpretation of bylaw changes or an inadequate interpretation, that's some of the word that's on the street um, that our transit peace officers are hearing, yeah. I'm, I'm always impressed by how people come to understand the law when it particularly affects them. <laughs> um, but so this, I well, it's not about loitering, it is about getting at the people who are taking advantage of, uh, of not just other people, but taking advantage of our uh, attempts to make this a more inclusive, safer city, correct? Yeah, I think that's a fair uh, comment, Councillor. And, you know, one of the things I, I have heard uh, since this topic has come up is, you know, why don't we just put the access control pieces to the, the transit? And of course, that is another piece we're bringing forward to the to the fall uh, for consideration because it, it's you know a pretty big infrastructure bill. Um, and 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 there isn't one solution to this issue. It is multiple solutions. Yeah, we think okay. so. Yeah. All right. Um, well, that adds some clarity for me in terms of um, sort of what you're looking to accomplish um, with this. Um, by law, so I don't have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Cartmel. Thank you, Mayor Sohi. I, I had many of the same questions as Councillor Hamilton, um, and I and uh, I have some. I guess my comment is that, is that this bylaw, the way it's read written now, is weirdly specific in a number of ways. So you know, Part A in the context of Councillor Hamilton's questions, you know, in, allows us to 
move along people that are not participating in the way we want them to participate on the platform. But the next page talks about performances. You know, a person may not offer uh, a live musical performance unless they have a permit. So we're not, we're, we're specifically pointing out something that might add a little bit of life to the environment there. Um, but, uh, you know, in order to, uh, for whatever reason, this layering on and layering on of a bylaw that seems to have been, you know, amended and appended you know, a number of times. Um, is there more work, I guess my question is this, is there more work to do to maybe re-examine the specificity of some of these categories and some of these items in this bylaw? Yeah, absolutely, Councillor, and I think it speaks to Councillor Rutherford's motion in terms of uh, some of that as well, but but as, as you've heard us talk about before, we want to animate the spaces and we want to, you know, we've talked to things like the Edmonton Street Performers Festival, how do we get them in there? And right. based on the, the wording, we would have to give them a permit, but I think we can work through all that. But you, I, I think you're absolutely right. There, there's more work to be done. This is, we, it gets back to Councillor Rutherford's question about why now? We're trying to deal with some very specific complaints we've heard. So, right, and, yeah. and trying to, and I, I appreciate that and I support that. And you know, I, I'll just point out another oddity. The first item under part three is spitting, but there's no mention of defecating or urinating. So by elimination, are those things uh, allowed? You know, that kind of a thing, right? And, and where, do we, where do we write the ticket for those activities? Yeah, I, 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 I agree with you. I think the, the bylaw, if you look at the, the volume of amendments, it's, it's become a bit of a Frankenstein. So I think a clean look, um, you know, we have enough general, general type provisions to, to, you know, thinking about the, you know, the, the comfort of other passengers and other people using this space that we can, we can enforce to ensure people feel comfortable. I mean, we can come up with scenarios from here till tomorrow. Uh, and it's hard, it's hard to always anticipate. I mean, Andre had, had some examples that we, we would never put in a bylaw in terms of behaviors. So I think finding the right balance. Now in terms of A, it is, it is specific, but this was very much in response to specific feedback we got from EPS. I think they, were, they, were fi they found a gap once the loitering, loitering provision was removed, and this was to help get at what we're really trying to do. To, to plug it. that gap, fair. So I'm going to circle back then. So in that context, and in the context of Councillor Hamilton's questions, back to the difference between the pedways and the transit areas. And and I appreciate Mr. Jones's uh, um, uh, suggestion around the transit center road at, at one of the suburban stops. But do we have do we have complementary bylaw for all of those spaces so that? We don't get into a, well, you can kick me out of the transit center, but you can't kick me out of the pedway. Uh, or I can, I'm not allowed to spit in the LRT station, but I am allowed to spit in the pedway. So are they complementary? Do they align? I, I think there's more work to do on that, Councillor. I think, yeah. the rea you know, we, we very, very clearly brought this forward in the context of the transit safety plan. Right. To address transit safety and not citywide safety. So I think there's more work that could be done citywide. Fair enough. Citywide, for instance, you're not allowed technically to ride your bike through a transit centre because it's transit property, which seems a little silly, and I'm talking about the transit centre that might be out at the Belvedere station, if you read this thing very strictly. But we have a realm downtown that was purposely built to use the LRT stations and the pedways that surround them as a public place. And so I, citywide is great. Downtown is what I'm talking about. Do we have complementary bylaw that that specifically states you can't do this stuff in these places so that we give people the comfort that you can't do this stuff in these places downtown. No, I don't think we do. Okay, then I think we have more work to do to provide that comfort to our, to our partners downtown. Thank you. I, I think, Councillor, if I may add, um, when we come back with an analysis, I think what we should do is, is, is go beyond this bylaw and look at all of the, the, the bylaw tools we have in our tool belts. And to Councillor Rutherford's questions about the uh, standard operating procedures, I think we can, we can bring that into, into the discussion too. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cartmel. Councillor Paquette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And uh, um, thank you uh, to administration for this work. I do have a question um, under the uh, 
inappropriate behavior. Uh, I'm not sure when it says um, interfere with intended use of uh, transit property. I just don't know what that means. It seems like it covers a whole lot of stuff that is kind of open to interpretation. Well, I, I mean, I think, again, we're trying to fit in so many scenarios and so many experiences that we've had to, to get to behavior and interfere with the intended use. Uh, there's, there's a, I mean, you think about Councillor Knack's, you know, uh, example of having, having uh, people block, and they actively do this, Councillor Paquette, they actively block people from getting in and out of spaces. This is also very heavily impacting our employees. So uh, we've got a lot of employees down in that space uh, who cannot do their work uh, because, yeah. you know, you know, so I think there's just, there's a number of scenarios. This doesn't get to, you know, our employees. Yeah, so you know, to, I can give you two specific. I understand your point and I get it. And there are a number of scenarios. The issue I have, like, I don't have an issue with, with uh, you know, enforcing that stuff, but I, we can already enforce that stuff. That's what I don't understand. What I don't under, and uh, I also don't understand, like that this term interfere doesn't just cover those specific cases, which obviously should be enforced, but it opens the door for a lot of interpretation. So well, I guess what I'm trying to figure out is um, materially, how does this differ from a loitering pilot? Yeah, I can, I can give two specific examples, Councillor. I, you know, I, I witnessed a, an individual who was sort of uh, trying to get onto the tracks, not jumping on, but sort of um, uh, moving from the platform onto the tracks, which required the, the, the LRT driver to slow down and stop uh, short so that, so that he didn't hurt him. That interfered with the system. And so I've seen, I, I've I have seen, to interrupt. Sorry. I, under, I have to interrupt. I understand all of that, you were describing specific things that are already actionable. Yeah, my second example I would say is uh, people holding doors open uh, so that the, the, the move, the, the LRT can't leave the stop and move forward. And, and so you're, there's often um, a delay in the, in the LRT train because people are deliberately holding a door open or blocking a door from being closed. So, that's so are example. you telling me that that's not currently enforceable? Again, it gets to the explicit uh, nature of it, so. And if I could just offer, I think one of the pivot points between 10.1 and 10.2 is 10.1 speaks about um, someone's comfort and that might be um, a little difficult to assess. What makes you uncomfortable, what makes me uncomfortable could be quite discretionary and it pushes it into a space of intended use where we become really explicit of a, a, a transit system is meant for movement and so I think that is part of the explicit um, Okay, again, I'll have to interrupt. That's already in climbing or interfering. I think, Councillor Paquette, what we're trying to achieve with the new addition <clears throat> is a focus on the space. So I think when you think when you look at 10.1, it was focused specifically on uh, experiences and you know behavior with experiences. But I think uh, two was intended to look more deeply at the use of the space, inappropriate behavior within us, the space. And how, how do we regulate the space uh, activity within the space a little bit better? That was the that intended. Was now, if we're not from... hitting the mark, then we, we need to address it. But that was the intended addition. Again, how is that different from 11? Like, it, when you read this bylaw and then you look at these additions, I'm scratching my head wondering what is materially different besides bringing back sort of a more open interpretation akin to a loitering bylaw when all of the things you're describing to me are already actionable and enforceable. Well, I, I, again, I mean, a, a lot of our changes here, uh, specific wording was requested by HS. Okay, let me, let me change it here. Give me something specific that these additions do that we cannot already do in the reading of the bylaw as it is. I think it provides clarity on what officers can do. Thank you, Councillor Paquette.
can you take the chair, please? I have the chair. So, so Mr. Jones, like your members, your uh, folks are out there every day uh, in, the, in the system trying to enforce the existing bylaw. And I understand from that they feel that they don't have the clarity and they need this clarity in order to uh, deal with some of the behavior that you want to, want to control. Mr. Jones? Yes, thank you. Um, you're asking if we have that clarity already no, or we're I'm, looking no, for No, but I'm gonna, like your, your folks are out there every day enforcing the bylaws and they will benefit from this clarity in order to make sure that they have the tools to move people if they're causing disturbance or engaging in uh, problematic behavior. Yes, and, and I don't, um, I don't want to speak for the EPS, but certainly we've had conversations with them about needing clarity as well. So I think this helps the, the, the full spectrum of uh, law enforcement that's engaged in transit. Um, I think any pieces of clarity that we can offer to those staff out um, in the transit space is beneficial. Um, from my perspective, um, 10, sorry, I'm flipping between screens here, 10B, um, really helps uh, clarify some pieces that, um, that that show that peace officers can engage in uh, dealing with open air drug use. Um, because that's a criminal matter, they're, um, uh, otherwise it would be a criminal matter. This gives them some capacity to uh, move that out of the transit space without having to deal with um, the, the open air drug use in a criminal way. Yeah. Um, which I know was another conversation, um, but uh, certainly it also provides that for our partners at the EPS. Yeah. You know, I, I think we should listen to our employees and get feedback from them and try to give them the proper tools. And we benefit from that when we listen to our employees, what the challenges they're facing. Uh, and uh, so that's one. The second, like the intent of this, these amendments, like somebody, if, if a vulnerable person is uh, quietly sitting at a transit station or in an LRT station, not causing any di disturbance, intent of these amendments not to target that person. Correct. But the, if that person becomes, uh, engages in a behavior that causes uh, issues, then that person becomes the target. So behavior becomes the target. That would certainly be our interpretation and use of it. Yeah. I think that's exactly, you know, if you were at a rec center or a library, uh, we do not tolerate behavior that disturbs uh, the, 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 the use of those facilities, but we do tolerate that behavior at, at LRT stations and at, at uh, at a transit at a station side. So the other, we, when weather, weather gets extreme cold or we get uh, uh, extreme heat waves and we activate our places to allow people to stay in those places, that will happen, right? That, that bylaw does not, this, these amendments do not stop us from activating our places. Yes, but once again, Your Worship, I would stress that uh, in, in those circumstances, Sleeping all night in an LRT station is not a safe place to yeah, be. But if so it's 30 degree out, minus 30 degree, we open up our stations to, for people to sleep. No, no we, we don't. Do, we do we, not, Your Worship. We, we, we do we, to do that we don't, when we have buses taking people to stations when we close the stations. Yes, when we close yeah. the stations, we yeah. have buses there. We yeah. get them to the stations, yeah. but we do not keep the stations. Yes, I, I get that. Yeah. But we have their service available, and that will be available in extreme cold conditions. Correct. Okay, Always, good. Yes. Yeah. So we won't kick people out to not go anywhere Correct. when it's got So I, I think that's very important clarity. On the, on the training for TSOs, we approved a funding package to provide more training for transit security officers as part of a safety plan, right? Uh, correct, yeah. And that will allow them to deal with uh, uh, passengers in a, in a, in a, in a more uh, non-judgmental, non biased, un they will deal with unbiased ways. So take, 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 tackling those uh, biases that sometimes lead to, uh, you know, 
targeting racialized individuals or indigenous individuals. That will help with that training. Training will help with that, those It'll people. It'll be enhanced them. training, but my, the assumption is that's not like, I just want to be careful in saying that there's always and continues and has been yeah. lots of empathetic that approach, has been, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's important yeah. to continually train and continually enhance that training yeah. as we discover more. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I will I will move the second round. Second. All right, that is moved by uh, the mayor and second by Councillor Knack. Uh, if there's no debate, uh, please call the vote. Please display the vote. And that is carried. Okay, I'll take the chair back. I return the chair. And I will go to Councillor Wright. Thank you very much. Just um, following up on a, a question um, from Councillor Hamilton in regards to um, this bylaw is, is intended to, to target more the, the criminal element. And I, I think Mr. Jones sort of alluded to it that there are. Um, uh, recourse under the the criminal code of Canada that the the police can can use to um, to make arrests is that correct? I mean that's correct, but this this provides some authority. It fits in with the, within the jurisdiction of the TPOs. TPOs don't enforce the criminal code. Okay, but if needed, they could call in EPS to to make the arrest. If they're working collaboratively, yes, that happens regularly. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just, yeah, having difficulty seeing the need for, um, for this specificity um, in in the bylaw when, it, as uh, Councillor Paquetta said, the powers are already there. So, okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Wright, Councillor Rutherford. Yeah, just just one more. Uh, quick question. So again, um, I guess this is to you, Ms. Plouf, because for example, in the, the section added, it says uh, cause damage to transit property in section 10-2A, or sorry, 10-2. And then section 11 says damage or interfere with transit property. So I worry that there is potential then for a double offense. Yeah, you, you know, Councillor, and, and I acknowledge that there, there is some duplicate wording. I think the risk of a, a, a double enforcement action is near nil. So, I mean, we, we, can, we, can, we can fix that. And, you know, so if I might say, this bylaw is not perfect. And I think um, we, we will come back, and I think we do need to come back to look at a holistic approach. Absolutely. <laughs> this was meant to respond to immediate and current issues that we were dealing with. So I, I think that was the intent. Yeah. My suggestion is let's try it. Let's see how it works. But in the meantime, let's come together with a bigger piece of work to look at it holistically. Yeah, well, I, but I, I mean, as an active transit user, I guess I'm struggling because as I've, I, mean, I went on LRT yesterday, right? I took LRT home and bus home. And I saw a marked difference even from April Right, like we are seeing improvements. And so what I don't understand and what I'm like, let's try this, but are we gonna see the outcomes of this before August 22nd anyway? Or why wouldn't we, if this is imperfectly, if we're acknowledging this kind of piecemeal and imperfect, that, that motion looks at, says, look at this holistically. What is gonna happen between now and August 22nd? Like if we do approve this today, like what, what changes in the immediate that can't wait till August 22nd, I guess is what I'm really grappling with. Yeah, maybe I'll take that, tackle that one, uh, Councillor. And, and I, I'll, I'll just say that, uh, again, it's it's another tool in the toolbox. It's a clarity piece. It's not perfect. And and uh, and this bylaw is not going to make or break our complete transit safety plan. But, again, it does address a lot of the concerns from the public, a lot of the concerns from enforcement folks, and it's one other tool in the toolbox. And that, that's, that's why it's, it's here for consideration. Yeah. Okay, that's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rutherford. Councillor Paquette. 
All right, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so let's let's take another crack at this. How does 2A provide more clarity rather than adding more vagueness? I would say again, the focus here was on the use of the space, on how the space is used. Okay, but how does it provide more clarity rather than more vagueness? Well. Um, Mr. Jones, can you take a crack at that given, you know, maybe some specific examples would help. I don't know if you have any. And I'll preface, I'll, I'll just add a little more. Wouldn't providing clarity add more clarity? Yeah, I, th I think, um, I, I guess I'll just, I think the issue, Councillor Puget, is just so, the, the long list of things, right? So, for example, um, somebody who's being very peaceful, very calm, but removing all their clothes. Uh, until the point that they actually remove their underclothing, it is very uncomfortable for people. And I know, um, you know, I, I've... Uh, wait, so, okay. Yeah. So, Andre, I'm going to interrupt because I don't have a lot of time. If someone starts removing their clothing right now, are you telling me that we can't do anything about that? Well, like, I, I, my point is that we, I keep getting these examples of, thing, of behaviors that we can already act on. Okay, so, I mean, I, I think we, we, we cautioned against a, a, a long shopping list. We felt sub B was critical uh, to, to, to add as a, a specific example. Sub A gets to um, activities such as, you know, gang gathering. Uh, you know, I, I think there's an, I mean, I, I don't want to give a number of specific examples, but it really gets to not using the space to go and hang out as, as a, you know, I don't want to use gang activity all the time, but it, it's, it may not get to the discomfort of people, but the, they're not, the space is not intended as a warming space. It's not intended to, uh, right. To, to so let's out. not use it as that. Um, you know, uh, apparently we already have teams that are going to engage with people. Okay. So let's, Go to that gang example you gave. Yeah, we don't want gangs, 100%. Absolutely not. If someone is not breaking a law, if someone is not interfering with transit, if someone uh, is not, <laughs> you know, we all, all the things that are already in the bylaw, are you then telling me that we are going to act uh, on folks who are not breaking any laws or any bylaws as described currently in the bylaw. Mr. Jones wants to take that, but I mean, I th again, the intended use of this addition is to and focus on gang, use of And if I would space. call the police, frankly. If I saw a gang and it was identifiable as a gang, I would call the police. And while I think that's possible, if people are moving through that space and it is a gang, I think to, to reiterate some of what Mr. Corbell talked about earlier, um, you know, if we have people on site and could approach and deal with that, uh, then that would be one layer while we're also activating the police because if they're not in the and space already, it takes keeps them from approaching currently. If not, if not. Well, I think we always want to make sure that we're um, based on, uh, you know, that lawful presence so that if things do escalate, then our, our staff are, you know, um, supported through legislation. Um, I think the more clarity we can have, the less they okay. have to I'm be thinking through the tool. I'm sorry, David, but we keep talking about clarity and none is being offered. And I agree. If, if, if we want to provide clarity to uh, our peace officers, we should. But I just don't see how this provides clarity. And I'm not getting an answer on this. Okay, I'm going to try one more time, Councillor Paquette. 
10.1 focuses on behavior that affects people. 10.2 focuses on behavior that affects use of space. That was the intent. And, and, and if we're, we're not getting that and it's not clear enough, uh, then you know it's council's decision not to approve the bylaw. And all I'm asking is to demonstrate how it is more clear. Thank you, Councillor Paquette. I think we're going too much into the weeds of how the bylaws are enforced, right? Mr. Mayor, I'm, I'm sorry, but it's, this is not getting into the weeds. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, Councillor Hamilton. Um, I'm sort of listening to what Councillor Paquette is saying, and um, I want to just take it back up a second because what I'm hearing for is a desire for codification, that we enumerate all of the things you're not allowed to do um, and the behaviors you're not allowed to do, but that is somewhat problematic, correct? In, in the imperfect practice of building a law, you cannot enumerate every potential um, misuse or transgression that people are capable of. We are very creative. Correct? Correct. All right. Um, and to that end, um, laws, bylaws, regulations can, can and sometimes must be intentionally broad to capture those discretionary, um, uh, those discretionary acts. Correct? Correct. And um, it is proven in the past that that discretionary, um, that discretionary interpretation has been problematic because it has been paired with other sort of imperfect human quality, qualities such as bias, but and such as um, uh, I see I see uh, uh, Mr. Jones nodding, such as bias. I'll, I'll leave that there. Correct. Councillor, if I could, I think um, I think there's inherent bias. I think that's part of the training, but I think there's also acting in the moment when um, you're dealing one-on-one -on -one with somebody, uh, but then all of those actions become aggregated as a system. And that's what we need to look at um, with respect to how our officers are working and, you know, really uh, tweak our, our, our processes and SOPs to make sure that we're accounting, you know, some checks and balances in there. Cause you're right there, there needs to be uh, some, some breadth in the wording. Uh, clarity is good, but there's needs to be some lateral as well. Cause if we have a long laundry list of exact circumstances, uh, what we'll find is that someday we'll discover a new thing that we've never encountered before and we won't be able to address it. Um, so I think there's some, there's some process work that needs to go in behind the scenes. There's some training that needs to be behind the scenes. Um, but certainly I think we have to be alive to the fact that uh, no human system is perfect and we need to keep working on it. And to that end, you're talking about accountability. Accountability, whether it comes through the Police Act or the Peace Officer Act or the training that we ask our um, uh, employees to do um, and a system by which to hold um, those officers accountable when that discretion when that discretion is applied incorrectly and I feel like that's what Councillor Paquette is getting at does that make sense yes that makes sense but in the meantime we still have an issue wherein people are using the um, charming specificity of our own laws and bylaws to um, act in bad faith on public property that impedes the lawful and the lawful enjoyment and use of these spaces by by bystanders correct yes and if I can clarify I mean just because somebody says well you can't kick us out for any reason anymore uh, it doesn't make it true but does it it does make it a lot more difficult for our transit peace officers to do that. And so it runs the risk of elevated injury and use of force and arrests and all of those pieces. If now that's the pushback that we're getting from some folks. 
All right. You can never eliminate that altogether, but it does increase that. And I, and I would also add is there's, you know, there's lots of deception being played out in these scenarios where, you know, the, the, the meth user, you know, they, they don't, they put their stuff away as TPOs come by, then they taunt some of the enforcement folks and say, you can't kick us out because we're just sitting here. So there's like, it's a very complicated and dynamic situation as, as you've seen if, if you've been riding it. So it's, it's just so far from being clear cut and, uh, and, and that this would help, I think, in terms of being able to push through some of that deception, deception that's being played in the system. Thank you. Those are my questions. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Rice. Uh, thank you, Ms. Mr. Chair. So uh, I listened very carefully and for the conversation, I really appreciate some like the points my colleagues uh, brought up. Uh, also, I do have a few uh, clarification questions. The first, the first thing I would like to say, this bylaw actually to me is very clear and is on what's the purpose uh, is that use of space is property and how we ensure that the space use property. So I would like to say what I heard from so many, so many of my constituents to talk about um, the current issue on the public transit. And then, so my question is, if, if the current tools, resources we have still make our public feel unsafe, that means we have to do something, right? So is my understanding right? That, that is why, so this bylaw come in. That, that really is the intent of why now. Um, and, but I also want to reinforce that, you know, things are uh, improving. This would be another tool in the toolbox to help improve it. Okay, uh, that, that's uh, good to know. Uh, the second thing is what I heard is not only about um, the passenger's behavior side. A lot side is about from our peace officer's perspective and also from our staff perspective. They feel safe and they feel they have that support. And from mental health perspective, they feel safe, they feel support. They have the tool and they can do their job. And because right now what I heard the concern from both sides and from passenger side and then from like peace officer side, actually I took, sometimes I took public transit. I actually personally talked to some of our peace officer and then security guardians there. And they feel, how they feel they can do their job. So this one actually gave them that comfortable feeling or more um, safe feeling and for, their, for them to do their job. So yes. is that understanding right? Yes, I think that understanding is very accurate, Councillor, and, and that is reflected in some of the comments we've had. So for, for a moment, let's not talk about transit police officers in the system, but let's think about the cleaners in the system, the people that are cleaning the stations, uh, our own staff that are doing maintenance in the stations who feel quite intimidated when, when some of these folks are around. And of course, they're not equipped, nor do we want them to enforce because they're just, they're, they're doing their jobs and they're, it's not an enforcement job. And the last thing I would say on this one is that that was reinforced, I think, when you heard from Mr. Bradshaw, uh, the president of ATU, when he came to talk about some of the concerns he's getting from his members as well, and and they were consulted on this draft bylaw as well. Oh, uh, I really want to make sure, and then after some tragics ha happened in our public transit safety, and also is is continuing is a concern coming. Uh, I really want to make sure, and from passenger perspective, uh, they they can stop to complain to us. Say. Uh, we look at the peace officer there, we look at the uh, security guard in there, they just stand there doing nothing. But the ACs can ensure they can do something, right? So from that perspective. Uh, uh, not this alone, but it certainly is another tool in the toolbox for them to, uh, it's an additional offense that, that allows them to enforce, yes. 
And also from, uh, from our staff side perspective, and they, they can have this tool to implement something uh, from behaviors what's described and in this bylaw. So I, I, I don't know our, the old bylaw and then our, my colleagues talk about this. Just by looking at this bylaw itself and so also look at what the needs right now are public, our Edmontonians needs. Uh, I don't know if, if I, I can ask this question if we didn't pass this bylaw. So we just need the, right now the situation and then getting worse and worse. And how that, can you, can you give me a little bit more information? Um, well, I would say, Councillor, that things are getting better, not worse and worse, but okay, they are getting that's better. Good. Uh, this would be another tool uh, to, to help uh, address that and one that's clear clear and one that quite frankly the public ask us about on a, on a daily basis in terms of why you know and so it would provide clarity for the public as well yeah. okay so I, I have thank thank you Councillor Rice can you move the uh, third round okay I move the third round second Councillor uh, Nap seconded please vote all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. And uh, Councillor Paquette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so uh, inappropriate behavior two. Um, that description, I think, is good. Uh, B, Makes sense, sure. It's A that, um, and let me, let's put it this way. Just let me know how this effectively or functionally differs from a loitering bylaw that we already got rid of because of, uh, because it simply didn't work and it was not equitable. And uh, it was uh, obviously um, very heavily weighted toward uh, visible minorities uh, as the enforcement target. So just let me know that because I'm, I'm ha my mind is open. But a is very it's to me is problematic, and maybe you have an answer to that. I would I would say, Councillor, that uh, the f couple of key differences. The first difference is that the loitering bylaw, as, as you know, was not just focused on the transit system, but but city city wide. So I think from so that's sure, this but is, let's just focus this on is, the trend. This piece. is absolutely a response to the transit safety plan very specifically, which is why we didn't include we didn't include pedways in all the other areas. Uh, so that's the, the first thing. The second thing I would say is it's also in response to what we have heard from enforcement officers, from our staff within the systems who are dealing with this every day and uh, and the union who who says who has also requested us to consider this bylaw and, and requested council consider it. So those are two fundamental differences. I think there was uh, there was a reaction uh, to when the when the bylaw changed last year, and that that changed what happened on the ground. So okay, I'm, okay, that, can I that clarify? didn't actually answer the question. I'm sorry. Can I try, uh, Councillor Paquette? Can I'll take. I won't take um, much of your time. Sure, but let okay. me just add another question in there. Sure, and. Uh, there seems to be a narrative that points fingers at a wording change as being the root cause of very complex problems. Mm -hmm. And are we saying that this wording change will actually solve those problems? I mean, it's not going to be a silver bullet. There, but there's. I just don't see how this wording change is not a reintroduction of something that was actually really, really something we could not be proud of. So, so I, then go ahead, please. Then. I don't please think that this bylaw or any wording in it is going to solve any root cause issues. It's, it's going to be another tool in the toolbox to, to help our folks deal with the symptoms of those issues. Okay, I'm going to clarify. Well, so the loitering piece, Councillor Paquette, was within the tran this bylaw. It, it dealt just with transit. So that it's not a loitering bylaw, it's a loitering provision that was removed. 
Now, how this differs from a loitering provision is the loitering allowed uh, peace officers and EPS to approach people for, for nothing to do with their behavior. This one introduces a focus on behavior in space and how the space is used. So it differs substantially from what we had in loitering. Lo loitering was, we can do whatever we want uh, and we can start asking for ID, we, you know, for no, re no behavior tied to that. This is different. Right, but we already have this in this current bylaw, as it is. Again, I, I think just focusing back on clarity for our peace officers and EPS members. What is more clear than a bylaw that is very clear? And this wording is literally, you know, I'm okay. You've got your position. Cool. Um, Councillor, I, I, I don't think it's a position. It's just we, we've tried to answer your question and I, I totally appreciate that we've not and, answered you know, it to your and satisfaction. And by answering the question, has gone into the weeds. I'm not even asking that. I was asking a larger question, the, the, the higher level perspective question here. And my, the answers I got were examples that we already covered in the current bylaw. So is it possible that, well, I don't know. Perhaps a uh, counselor has something uh, that they would like to do as a motion here. Um, I, I, I certainly don't want to interfere with that. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Paquette. Councilor Stevenson. Yeah, I mean, maybe just I, I, I think I'm getting some clarity. I really appreciate the the answers that have been provided. Um, I'm wondering. So, so I think what I'm hearing from from my colleague is is a concern about sort of a, a duplication and does this this open up um, any any challenges? So I'm just trying to think of how we we avoid repetition or or avoid. Um, a lack of clarity. Does does ten one is ten one still operative? Like, I, I'm just wondering if that if those two. So having ten one and then the two a. Do we need both? Like, is that maybe some of the hesitation I'm I'm hearing from my colleague, and and is that a solution? Well, it, it could be. I, I mean, I, I mean, if, if council's not comfortable with the wording, we can take another another shot at it. We have Council Rutherford's motion still still in play um, and, and her direction. So uh, we'll just take the direction from council on how you want to move forward. Okay. Yeah. And again, I really appreciate um, the distinction that you've aimed to draw between what was the previous loitering bylaw. I think that, um, you know, as was eloquently put by, by Councillor Hamilton, that that an openness to interpretation leads to room room for human flaws and, and biases to come through. Um, and I think that there are ways we could, you know, manage and track that through the training that you've described through reporting. Um, so, so maybe, yeah, sorry, I guess I don't, I, I have no further questions there. I think that's just something for us to reflect on. Um, and, and again, just wanted to, to confirm that, that there would be further refinements coming forward as part of Councillor Rutherford's motion for us to consider uh, and, and potentially with input from, from officers that have been implementing this over the next few months in terms of identifying some of the things that are working well and not working well with this wording. Yeah, there absolutely will be Councillor for sure, yeah. Okay, okay, well, thank you. Um, I'll yield the rest of my time. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson, Councillor Dan. Yeah, I'll just be really brief. Um, Thank all of you for the for the great questions. Uh, answer most of it, but I feel like the final element uh, I'm hearing too is that our frontline staff will feel a lot more empowered with this current provision. In the meantime, um, while that work in the background is happening due back August twenty second, I think that's fair, Councillor. Yeah. 
and there's no other way to make them feel more empowered, even though portions of what they will be feeling empowered by is kind of there uh, and is being, I guess, refined. Yeah, I would say we continually uh, ask that question, and we, you know, we do ride alongs like like yourself yeah. as well. And so, so I think this, and the, you know, I, I just don't want to tell this as the perfect solution for sure. It's it's certainly uh, uh, additive to what we have, and it gives them an, another tool. Um, but that's the sense we're hearing from from employees and from the union as well. Right. Right, and 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 offering that reassurance about um, that works to. You know that that there is work in the back. You know this is an imperfect solution. Um, doesn't offer any reassurance to them, because I guess I'm just thinking like kind of this issue of, you know, if I'm there in the front line and I don't feel empowered to kind of do my work, is this gonna be it, right? And and if not, are there other ways that can make me feel more? I, I don't think this one thing will be it. I think it's helpful and additive, but I think the other things that we're doing in terms of making sure that they, the staff know that we have the backs, their, their backs, and we spoke uh, during the transit safety upda update yeah. about our occupational health and safety responsibilities related to that. And I would say that that has helped with, with uh, them feeling more empowered and supported on the ground. And I'll see if Mr. Jones wants to add something. I just echo exactly what you're saying. You know, clarity is kindness. So this helps a, a, a bit, but also behind the scenes with our processes and ensuring that they have very clear sort of deployment uh, regimes that also uh, is helping. And so part of that is training. Part of that is, you know, leadership practices. All of those things come into play and, and overlap each other. And I would also add that, you know, what, what the staff see on social media by everybody is, is another thing that they see and hear all the time. Uh, and so in terms of, uh, no matter what the decision on this today, in terms of um, them seeing that from elected officials and leaders is also helpful in terms of, you know, uh, empowering them to do their jobs on the ground. With statements on social media. I mean, like, I'm just like, can't, you know, aren't there other ways of, you know, elected officials conveying their support for the frontline staff? Yeah, I, I, would, I would say that one of the most difficult things for staff is when they see negative social media comments about their work. That right. is very hard for them. Um, and, and I'm not suggesting it's counselors, it's, it's, it's other leaders in sure. the community as well. Sure, okay. I don't know if that will be resolved by this, that's all. And um, No, I was just adding yeah, it on as absolutely. a consideration of, in, in light of the question about what else, what other things we could do, right? Yeah, uh, anyways, I feel like we're probably pretty close to, to voting, so if I can just use the last bit of time. Um, I think, you know, when I came into this conversation, I was fairly open-minded. I, I understand the challenges in terms of the occupational, especially the mental and emotional um, pressure on our frontline staff, um, but also just being very mindful that, you know, we do have this work um, with Councillor Rutherford's motion. I've, I worry about the redundancy um, that will add to, that will actually counter the intention of what we're trying to do here. Um, and so, you know, I appreciate the, the, the conversation and of course all the work that has gone into it. Uh, I don't think, you know, not supporting this today doesn't mean we don't support, you know, empowering the frontline staff with that work that is that that is coming. And, you know, in the meantime, you know, I, I know that they're under extreme pressure um, and certainly will do my best to, to communicate that um, and their, the role that they play uh, with, my with my constituency and be just being very mindful of, you know, in our role, how do we, how do we communicate about this work? So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Tang. Councillor Paquette, do you have more questions or uh, to speak? Uh, I have a potential amendment that I think will help, Mr. Mayor. Okay, then we need another round. So Councillor Tang, can you please move another round? Uh, Councillor Rice uh, spoke on this during this round, but we have to go to second round, third round to uh, everyone. That's my, she spoke once, right? Yeah. 
So what happens, Madam Clerk, that if Councillor Rice has only spoken once, mm -hmm. for her to give a second round, we still have to go to approval through the approval, or can it no, go to her first? No, Council's already actually approved a second round, so I would suggest Councillor Rice is entitled to speak. Second round, okay, good. Yeah. And okay. then after, if we need more round, then we would happen to have another. Got it. Okay, Councillor Rice. Uh, I don't have a question. I just speak to. Thank you, Councillor Rice. Uh, okay, then we need a uh, okay, third I'll, round. Third I'll, round. I'll, I'll move to uh, another round. Okay. So second. we need a seconder, Councillor uh, Cardinal, no, Cornet. Neck. Okay. Uh, all right. So please vote. It's a third round, not a second round. Could we do that with unanimous consent, or if we have just? I'm looking at the system here, and it looks like it might take a second to reset. Do you want okay. me to send out the vote? Okay, I'll try to send it out. Here we go. We have all the votes, Mr. Mayor. Display the votes, please. That is carried. Okay, Councillor Paquette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So I don't want to see this uh, um, this hard work die on the vine. So what I would uh, propose is that uh, we approve the bylaw today, but strike uh, 2A uh, for now to give administration time to sort of work on it because we're talking about clarity and I think what we've achieved here is a lack of clarity. And maybe um, if administration come back as soon as possible with some rewording on this, uh, that would that would help a lot. Um, and uh, maybe provide more clarity to council so that they um, can have comfort with what they're voting on. But uh, I don't think You're anyone moving has any to issues Sorry, with just hold on constantly. So that was my uh, amendment and introduction. Councillor Paquette, we're just talking about process. So you need to make the amendment, Councillor Paquette. Yeah, I move that uh, uh, 2A uh, be struck and the administration come back uh, so, as soon so, as possible so, with so a Councilor rewording. Paquette, that's two different things. So right now, the first thing you need to do is just deal with the bylaw, the bylaw oh, before you. Okay. So step one would be the, the amendment as it would be presented would be to strike 2A. Council can, vote right. on the, Council can then vote on that amendment if they agree or disagree. And then the bylaw will be as amended as ready for first reading. If okay. you want to provide yeah, subsequent sense. direction after that, you can do so then. Perfect. Thank you, Madam Clerk, as, as ever. Is there a seconder, Mr. Mayor? Second. Councillor Tang seconded it. So now we are on questions on the amendment, right, Madam Clerk? Okay. Questions on the amendment, Councillor Knack? Sorry, and it's more just a, a picky piece. The, the amendment would also have to then re, re letter B to A, which I know is silly nitpicky but sorry yeah if this passes we would then do that do we shouldn't oh, okay we would do that after all right thank you mr chair point of order yes uh, i Constant. do have a question for have the okay, amendment okay on the amendment just hold on okay. um go ahead just hold on councillor rice you are next go, sorry go ahead councillor rice so i don't see this deletion and for the section 10 2a is um, proper or is repeat of the 10-1. And because it, the difference, if you read carefully, and in 10-1, we actually, there is no piece specifically related to, uh, referred to um, transit property. Um, I, from my perspective, I think, um, I also, I trust the professional uh, writing and uh, from administration, even though it's not perfect. But we need to capture what issue right now we are facing and our public facing, our staff are facing. Um, so I'm, re I'm not, it's not clear to me why we need to delete this. 
I'm happy to answer that. Uh, if you look at uh, no, just hold on, Councillor. Pa sorry, Councillor Paquet. Sorry, Councillor right Paquet. There's no question. Um, I, Councillor Rice has to. Oh, pass I thought me. that was a question. Two, no, no, I, I just say my question is to uh, administration, and then I, I don't see this uh, be delayed is necessary. Okay. Yeah, and I would just say that that that, that is our recommendation, Councillor, as we put it forward. Okay, so that is only my question and for the amendment. Thank you, Councillor Rice. I yield my time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rutherford. Yeah, I'll be really, really brief. Uh, I can't support this amendment, just like I can't support the proposed changes to the bylaw that were brought forward today, and I'll speak to my rationale why, but I wanted to explain that the reason I'm not supporting this is because I'm not going to support the whole thing in its totality, whether this is deleted or not. Uh, and I think by, you know, piecemeal adding or deleting, we're not doing justice to this bylaw, we're not doing justice to public safety, and we're not doing justice to all of the concerns that we've heard. So for those reasons, I cannot support this amendment, and I cannot, and I'll speak to why I cannot support it. And, and in fact, I would look to the clerk to see if there can be a refer back motion that can be made instead of putting first reading on the floor? Do we have to put first reading on the floor? But that's a question. Nope. You do not have to put first reading on the floor. Okay. All that's on the floor right now is an amendment. Once that has happened, then it's up to the assembly. Okay, thank you so much. Do. Appreciate it. Thank you, Councillor Rutherford. Councillor Stevenson. Yeah, questions to administration on this. Um, if my, my take is that the removal of the loitering bylaw I believe sent a signal to, to uh, our peace officers, potentially to EPS officers as well, that council was saying, do not engage with any members of the community that may uh, be marginalized. Is that, is that a somewhat fair assessment of maybe what uh, is leading to this current situation? I, I don't, well, first of all, I, I want to be clear. I don't think that was the intent of council to send that Ab signal. Oh, I, so I just want to be not. that clear. Absolutely not the intent. Yeah. But I, I've maybe heard suggestions that that was a consequence. Uh, I, I think that's fair, but not universally, uh, councillor. I, I, so I, I don't think, uh, and I don't have, you know, we have not sort of done a, a survey of what folks feel and I can't provide that but I think that's fair in the minds of some people I don't think it applies to everyone uh, but it I think it's fair to say overall it, it's caused some uncertainty in the system yeah so you know again saying I don't think that was the intent of the previous council I certainly don't think that's the intent of this council I think what we're really asking for is for our frontline staff to walk what is admittedly an incredibly difficult balance between being compassionate, unbiased, um, inclusive of all Edmontonians, while also, you know, enforcing our rules and regulations and standards of behavior. Yeah, I think that's fair, Councillor, in, in a very difficult environment. Yeah. yeah. So then my question would be, would, would the deletion of this provision of, of the proposed bylaw confuse the signals and the intent that we are trying to send, which again is that that equitable, compassionate, um, just justice-based approach to dealing with all members of our community. Well, again, also still wanting to empower our enforcement officers to, to uphold appropriate behavior in our public spaces. That, that would be my concern, having not had you know, a ton of time to think about this or talk to anybody about it, but, but that would be a concern I would have. And, okay. and and I think it's also what signal is sent to the public and how do they interpret that signal? Yeah, and again, I'm always mindful that we want to be, um, you know, I think I think Councillor Principe put it very well a number of months ago. But just if there's an issue of perception, we can we can counter that with communication as much as possible. So I don't want to be governing by perception, I suppose, rather than fact, but um, I appreciate those insights. I'm gonna reflect a bit further because I'm not sure how I feel about this amendment right now, but, but it, those answers help me make my decision, so thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Anyone else on questions for, on the amendment? So, Councillor uh, Hamilton, you have questions? Go ahead. Just one 
question. When I read, look back over the letter that was sent from the Minister of Justice and Solicitor General, I see two paragraphs that are concerned about transit safety specifically. And uh, cognizant that we have a public safety plan that is due tomorrow, cognizant that they asked for some action on part of the public safety plan, how would the passage of this bylaw and the amendment um, and the changes that both administration has brought forward and the changes we are, or that Councillor Paquette has put on the floor, impact the, um, I'm going to say, uh, perception of that public safety plan or implementation of that public safety plan? My opinion, Councillor Hamilton, is if, if this is passed, it will um, be helpful to get a favorable acceptance of our public safety plan. But I don't think it's going to be, you know, um, the be all end all of it getting approved or supported or agreed to by the Minister of Justice or not. And of course I can't, I don't, don't know, can't speculate on what he mm -hmm. may be thinking about it. But, but um, specifically addressing concerns around um, transit safety, uh, and I'm looking to pull, um, a line here, but uh, but specifically addressing it, at least in the interim, until Councillor Rutherford's motion can return and we can have a more fulsome conversation, would likely send a signal that we are taking this issue very seriously. Yeah, I would agree with that assessment. I mean, the bottom line is we have a draft paragraph in the plan right now that that you know says we uh, that would depending on the the decision from council will say we've added a bylaw or will delete that paragraph if the decision is not to support the bylaw. So that's that's kind of where it is. All right, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Wright. Hi, thank you very much. So if we're taking out all of 2A, that kind of leaves B just hanging. It, would, would the clerk be amending that so that we, He's we, just not sitting yeah, there alone. Yes, we would fix the wording. Yes, we do. So what we first have to get direction from is the amendment, and then we actually have the authority between ourselves and legal services to adjust all numbers and letters as required. It's a bylaw consolidation. Okay. And then my other question, I guess, maybe for, for legal is the Controlled Drug and Substance Act of Canada right now can be actioned by police, but not bylaw? On the criminal side, by police. This gives bylaw a, a clear authority to act on when people are visibly using a substance in the space. I'm not sure if that's clear. Okay, and right now, right now they don't have that clear authority, but or do they have that authority? They just aren't aware. Of it. Again, I, I think it goes it goes to the clarity on what what they can and cannot do. And Mr. Jones might want to add to that. Sure, I can add to that. Um, the, the Peace Officer Act and regulations say that uh, peace officers can't seize drugs, can't be involved in a criminal investigation. That said, they could make a criminal arrest for drug possession. But again, that would trigger then uh, those peace officers leaving the system, having somebody under arrest, needing to uh, wait for the EPS to come and take that over. And we need to consider the volume of what that would mean for both the very limited resources of the transit peace officers, but also the capacity for the EPS to respond. And they may not prioritize. I, again, I can't speak for them, but I don't know where that would fall on their priority. So we could have a transit peace officer sitting for hours in order to hand somebody over that may or may not get charged at the end of it. So this allows us a tool that streamlines that process and addresses the behavior in that place without criminalizing and without uh, tying up resources. So if this is left in there, how does that streamline the process? So they have the authority right now, it just takes time. How does this lessen the time that they have to take? They have, uh, 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 so the, the peace officers have an arrest authority uh, similar to any one of us um, with respect to kind of that citizen's arrest or fines committing uh, piece of the criminal code. Um, for the very specifics of that, uh, I might look to 
Ms. Plouffe for Ms. Jacobson for uh, any um, any additional matters. I just I wanted to I, I wanted to stress that this could create um, some efficiencies within the way that we deal with these matters. I'll ask Ms. Jacobson to step in. Sure, happy to on this one. So the peace officers can't directly enforce as peace officers the federal legislation. That's a limitation. So what this does open the door for is still not to enforce that legislation directly. They're not going to be charging anyone for drug use. They're simply noticing that this interferes with the public space and creating a bylaw offense for the interference that that use has on the space. It's not actually a defense under the federal act. Okay, so Mr. Jones mentioned efficiencies. So what makes this more efficient if this is left in? The efficiency arises as it gives them an option versus having to call in EPS or others with actual authority to enforce that federal legislation to not deal with the direct issue of drug use, but to simply say this has an interference with the space and we need that not to occur in our space. So it is an efficiency in that way by allowing a different method and, and a decriminalized method. So the offender is not charged under the criminal code, only under a bylaw? Yes, simply for the impact that it has on the space, not the actual drug use itself. And, and, I, and I, would even, I would even go further and say they're not necessarily going to get charged under the bylaw. It gives us a reason to engage uh, and a reason to remove somebody from that space. So the enforcement may just mean removal from the space, maybe a ban, whatever that is appropriate in, the, in, in that circumstance. I, I think I will wait for Councillor Rutherford to refer, make a motion to refer this back then for, for further work. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Wright. So that concludes the questions. Uh, anyone to speak on the amendment before I go to I don't see anyone to speak. Councillor Rice, are you speaking on the amendment or you're speaking on the main bylaw? The main bylaw? And Councillor Stevenson, are you speaking on the amendment or on the main bylaw? Uh, the main, okay, thank it. you. Okay, Councillor Nat, can you take the chair? Just to, yeah. Certainly, I've got the chair. Thank you. I will not support uh, Councillor Paquette's amendment. You know, I deeply value the questions that he's raising and uh, and I share some of the uh, hesitation on uh, on enforcement and uh, I think we we can tackle that through uh, uh, in making sure that uh, we are asking those questions to administration on the on the enforcement side of the things right and I guess there's a history of uh, uh, of uh, enforcement going back and uh, you know our by officers absolutely try to be as compassionate as possible but I understand the the concerns but I think removing this will not give the clarity that our bylaw officers seeking that the intended use of transit property is for people to use transit that this, they should not be hanging out there for a longer period of time, causing disturbance. So it targets the behavior, not just the, not the presence. And I think that clarity is so important. The way people know that when they go to the library, they're there to use the library. And if they cause discomfort for other people, there's a clear expectation that such behavior will not be tolerated in the library. Same as when people go to rec center. They know they're there to use the rec center. And if they cause disturbance or their behavior is not intended for the use of the rec center, they know they cannot engage in that behavior and they can clearly be removed. That kind of clarity does not exist on public transit. I think we need to that give that kind of clarity to our enforcement uh, uh, folks. And, uh, and that's why I cannot support this amendment. And I will take the chair back. I'll return the chair. Thank you. And I'll go to Councillor uh, Councillor Paquette to call, close. Yeah, I'm to close unless anyone wants to speak to this. No, nope. you go ahead, close. Okay. There is clarity in the bylaw. Uh, in 10, uh, under inappropriate behavior. In 11, under climbing or interfering. 
those items are literally already there, just like the library, just like a rec center. If anyone is, is causing any uh, disturbance that uh, interferes with the safety or comfort of others, or if they're interfering with any transit property, those are already very clear in the bylaw. I'm looking at it in black and white. It's very clear. What I'm asking uh, in this deletion is not to throw it away. It is It is to give administration an opportunity to take another crack at it while we still pass uh, B, which will not be B when we pass it, which is, uh, uh, I think, a good addition. Now, maybe this could have been very simple if the wording in, in the bylaw included equitable, just, compassionate, anti-racist enforcement and application. That might have uh, satisfied. But I'm worried that this, and I can't presuppose a vote, but I'm worried that the bylaw as written is not going to be passed by council. This is an attempt to find a way through. And it should not take a lot of work. And again, if we're trying to provide clarity, I will offer it right now. Inappropriate, beha inappropriate behavior, 10, it's right there. Climbing or interfering, 11, it's right there. Very, very clear, actionable. So if this passes, I would ask the administration then work on that portion just to ensure that there's comfort on council uh, that this provision uh, will not bump up and uh, be used in a way that looks a lot like the uh, loitering uh, section of the bylaw that was deleted. And a reminder, it was deleted because the application was found to be weighted extremely heavily on the side of a racial application. Now, this bylaw, no matter how we word it, is not going to solve those issues. Those are larger issues. And ones that we've talked about extensively. And we know they are complex root causes. But again, if the intent is cleared, it's already in the bylaw. And it is no different than what we can already do at libraries and rec centers or even city streets. I hope that pro provides clarity. Now, 2A may have some merit, but not add it as it is written right now. I understand that there is an impetus and a pressure to throw this in because we have some provincial pressure right now. I get it. But I think 2B covers something, and 2A, again, is already covered in the bylaw, but the way it's written does not add any comfort to how it will be enforced. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilor Paquette. So I'll call the vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That has failed. Okay, we're back to the... Uh, all right, Councillor Rutherford, you have... Uh, so just hold on. I'm going to go to the list. Just hold on. We're just going to scroll up the list. I believe it goes Councillor Stevenson, then Councillor Rice, then Councillor Rutherford. Mr. Stevenson and Councilor Rice are both to speak, right? Um, <clears throat> no, I have a motion put on. And then I think we need to follow the order for the for Yeah, the let list. me just get the, get the list back here, Councilor. Uh, so Councilor Stevenson was first? Councilor Stevenson, so the, the order that I have now is Councilor Stevenson, Councilor Rice, and followed by Councilor Rutherford. Councilor Stevenson? I am just to speak, so happy to defer. Okay, Councillor Rice. Uh, 
I'm going to close this bylaw and then to put the first reading on place. Second. Okay, Councillor, sorry, Madam Clerk, and that's an order. Yeah, you can, now that the amendment's been taken care of, uh, council can put an amendment on the, or sorry, council can put first reading on the floor whenever they want. Okay, so we have a first reading on the floor. I think it was uh, Second by Councillor Prince Bay. Second, moved by Councillor Reyes, and second by Councillor Prince Bay. Okay, I that can, creates, I, can, just, I can speak. Uh, just to hold on, Councillor Reyes, yep. you... You move the amendment, uh, you, you put the bylaw on, on the floor and yep. it's seconded by Councillor Prince Bay. And we concluded all the questions. Uh, and Councillor Rice will be concluding the at the end, right? Yes, so the motion has been moved for first reading. So yeah. it is customary to let the person who moves the motion to introduce, to introduce. It briefly yeah. Yeah. and then to carry on with the list. Got it. Good. Mm -hmm. Councillor Rice, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I do think, and for all the discussion, we missed the two very important points. The first one is public voice. And we heard over and over, I believe my colleagues received lots of emails as well. And our public right now, in the big pen and the big fear, and to take our public transit. And then our public transit is impact. And then this is not only about, yes, readership, is about what the message our city, as a capital city, we try to send to our Edmontonians, or send to other cities about how we address our public fear, our public concerns, and regarding the safety. So this voice and the entire discussion today, I didn't even hurt one of my colleagues to mention about these concerns. I, my inbox has so many emails and from parents and from students and from our employees works who take public transit and then tell us their, their personal experience, how their personal experience interfered by the behaviors, um, improper behaviors in the public transit. This, all the evidence not mentioned at all today. So this is, I was very disappointed. And if we are talking about equitable, equitable, if we are talking about com compassionate, why we cannot just look at the voice we heard here and consider it and into our decision making process. So I want to say that, and then um, this is why I think this, that's his first point. The second point is about urgency. And if we are not just this urgency, we are waiting for another two and a half months. And then even though, yes, this bylaw cannot resolve the complex issue right away, but the complex issue cannot be resolved in one step or one tools. We have to have multi-level steps and multi-tools together and to address the issue. So I think I really encourage my, my colleagues consider to pass this bylaw today. And then we can take action right away to address the concern and from our Edmontonians to ensure our city safety. And thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Reyes. So we are in the... So, Councillor Stevenson speak, Rutherford to speak, right? And Councillor Paquette to speak, Councillor Jens to speak or question, speak. And Councillor Hamilton to speak or question, speak, okay, speak. All right, Councillor Stevenson, go ahead. Now we have concluded questions, we are speaking now. Thank you. Uh, yeah, this is, this is obviously a very challenging one and I appreciate um, all the values that were brought to the table today from my colleagues, uh, both recognizing the, the very urgent need we, we have in our transit system to be providing a safer experience for all users um, and wanting to avoid um, discrimination in our, in our community as well. 
So I, I certainly agree that, that this bylaw is not a perfect solution. Uh, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to further refinements and work that will come through the motion that Councillor Rutherford made earlier in the year uh, when we come back to this again in August uh, and look forward to having an opportunity to, to hear from frontline staff in terms of what, what they need uh, for refining that and what we also need to do to ensure that equity as well. I think this also points to the fact that we will never be able to have perfect wording, uh, that, that bylaws will always have some room for interpretation. And so the importance uh, in our training and our procedures to, to reduce that risk of discrimination as much as possible is, is really critical. So, you know, for administration, hearing, hearing the work that you're doing in that regard is really encouraging. Um, and we will continue asking very hard questions, uh, not, not because we aren't trusting you to be doing that work, um, but to ensure that we can demonstrate and be accountable to our community that that work is happening. So I look forward to the reporting on tickets being issued on any race-based data that we're able to collect in terms of those interactions and also encouraging community members to let us know what your experiences are so that that can help inform how we move forward. I do want to stress my support for the frontline staff that I appreciate are walking a very, very fine balance. I don't envy uh, the dozens, if not hundreds of uh, nuanced ethical decisions that they need to make each and every day. That is in no way easy work, uh, particularly when, when you're doing it in public. So know that that you have my support in terms of understanding those challenges and, and hoping that we can continue to have those dialogues about the values that we need to bring to that work and how we can support each other in that. And of course, this conversation uh, wouldn't be complete without acknowledging the fact that we have folks in public spaces um, because they have nowhere else to go in many cases. Uh, so continuing to work towards those long-term solutions, uh, ensuring that there is housing and adequate supports for everyone uh, is also critical to this work that we're doing. So I will be supporting this bylaw in the recognition that there's further work to be done, um, but that it adds an interim tool in our toolbox that can help address the safety needs that we are hearing so urgently from our community. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Councillor Rutherford. Yes, so <clears throat> I'm, it's my understanding that a referral back motion is in order. So I'd like to move that bylaw 19983 amending bylaw uh, 8353 Conduct of Transit Passenger Bylaw as outlined in the May 24th, 2022 Office of the City Manager Report OCM 1303 be referred back to administration and returned to the August 22nd Community and Public Services Committee meeting, including any updates as required to align with the report, report responding to the February 22nd, 24, 2022 mo related motion. Second. Second, so consent by Councillor So I just need clarity, Madam Clerk. We have a bylaw on the floor. First reading has been moved, and second, and people are speaking to it now. We concluded the questions. So can you explain how the referral is in order? Sure. So if I can remind everybody that motions to refer are subsidiary to the main motion. So this is a practice that is not only in Robert's rules, but has also been um, how this council has conducted itself for quite some time. And so there are motions that have been referred from the floor or items um, as recently as your budget. And so if you remember in the council report that came forward for SCUBA, it actually had a motion on the floor that was referred back to administration to come back at a different time. This is exactly the same thing. So even... We conclude questions, speaking to it, still it's in order. Uh, that's all you need there to know. There has no bit decision yet been made on the bylaw other than an amendment that didn't pass. The motion that is on the floor is to give first reading. That's okay. it. So referral is in order. That's all. The Good. referral is in order. Okay, now we go to questions on referrals, then stop speaking to the bylaw. Yeah. Can I? That, I'm can just I? told, I just need a process point of view. Uh, so now next step is that we ask questions on the referral or speak on the referral. That is correct. Not on the bylaw that is on the table. You don't have to, you can just call the vote, but you are welcome to Got manage okay. that as you see Good. fit. So we are questions on the referral and Councillor Rutherford, you want to introduce it? Yeah. 
Yeah, so I think, so I'm gonna first start by saying, I think the m fact that we've taken two hours to debate this bylaw shows that we're not in a space where, you know, this is law that we're passing. And if it's that unclear, that's concerning to me. This is our highest order as a municipal government of the things that we make. And so if we have this much time and we still have this many questions, I don't think that that uh, is, is not reason enough just to refer back. But in addition to that, I think that, you know, th things that I've heard through the discussion today are that the Pedway is not captured in this bylaw. So we're, we're addressing a specific concern that is actually not addressing all of the specific concern. So I think if we want to look holistically, I think a subsequent that I would hope to put on the floor, maybe a notice of motion I will be putting on, is around the same kind of holistic look at our public spaces bylaw. I've already seen a marked improvement in transit, and I agree wholeheartedly with Councillor Paquette that I, as somebody that has written bylaws myself, I do not see personally how this adds anything to the authority that is already there. I would have rather seen a standard operating procedure or potentially an admin policy that assists t transit, part, transit peace officers with the interpretation of both the bylaw for both transit and public spaces. And that could have been done, you know, earlier on because that's within a really quick turnaround, the same as we have with the hate symbols, right? So I think that there is, that is where, if there is that need, that is the secondary tool to then going into law. You know, I heard Mr. Jones say, you know, well, it's not discretionary, but transit officers will ask, is this behavior problematic? And that to me is a very discretionary question and can lead to a lot of biases. And I know we've talked about race a lot, but I worked with youth in my past, and so I wanna highlight, you know, a group of youth tends to create a level of discomfort that isn't seen with a group of seniors. So even just that can create discretion. I also think we've talked a lot today about intent, but I wanna remind people that intent doesn't equate to impact. And what I mean by that is sometimes we can have the best intentions, but still cause harm. And I, you know, we admitted ourselves that this is piecemeal, that this needs a holistic look. This work was already in progress. I don't understand why we cannot include in that report to the province the line about the motion that was put forward in February and that work is happening on to signal to them that we are taking this seriously because we have been taking this seriously, quite frankly, before the province's letter. And so I, I just, I really don't wanna be reactionary, not with law. I also think we've talked about the balance between being too prescriptive and too uh, um, open to interpretation. And I call that loose type fit. And I think with bylaw, you have to strike a balance of being prescriptive enough without being over prescriptive, but providing that clarity. And I heard across the board, and at least from a few of my colleagues, and even in hearing some of the answers to Mr. Jones, I think his interpretation was even different from what I was hearing from Mr. Corbold and, and Ms. Plouffe. So that's concerning to me. We already have this coming back on August 22nd. I really encourage my council colleagues to consider, you know, what are we do achieving by putting this in, in law today? And can that not be better served without causing harm by waiting to get that holistic purview. I think that, I said in my original motion, I didn't wanna see, I wanted it to see explicit about the use of drugs, so I agree. Section B should still be in there, and I think this has been a fruitful conversation to help direct and guide what can and should be in that bylaw when it comes back in August 22nd, but I really hope uh, I have my, my colleagues' support in, in referring this back because I'm very uncomfortable with these amendments as they stand. Thank you, Constable. So, Constable Jan's questions on the referral? No, speaking support. Councillor Hamilton, questions on the referral? Just speak. Speak to referral? Yeah. Okay, Councillor Salvador, speak. speak to referral or questions? To speak. Councillor Cartmel, question or speak? To speak. To speak. Okay, Councillor Jan, did you say you want to speak to referral or? Uh... Yeah, I would. Go ahead. I... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I think it's clear that since, you know, We've been dealing with a doubling of homelessness through the pandemic. We've been dealing with so many other social challenges. We've been, uh, as a council, not just us, but the council before us, this has been a, a, a long journey. 
and I concur I was, uh, with with Councillor Rutherford. I'm uh, I'm a transit user myself, and that there is a marked difference. And we're hearing that from partners as well. I was talking to a social agency partner about the difference that the COT teams is make are are making in our in our community. So um, I think as far as making a material changes and improvements, um, that's already happening. And hearing today that we already have a, a lot of emphasis in our our current um, legislation, that to me gives me a lot of comfort. So no matter what happens right this moment, um, uh, we already have improvements being made and, and changes being done. What, um, why I support the referral is that it, we, we need it to be comprehensive and, and I think administration has highlighted some other opportunities where we could do a more robust job here. So I actually think this will get us a, not just a, a cleaner product, but a more comprehensive product. And uh, I, I support that. I just wanted to reiterate again, I mean, the, the urgency of right now, we have 170 day shelter spaces for over 2,752 unhoused neighbors. That is a fraction. And so the same disorder and challenges that we've seen on the LRT or the library or the streets downtown or anywhere else, if the minister's seriously concerned about fixing this, changing, uh, making a slight wording changes that allows for additional, um, well, uh, that doesn't change anything. We already have the ticketing and the, and the, the, the powers. Yes, it would, it would send a, a, uh, an important, um, stagecraft message but in terms of the statecraft we already have a situation here where uh we have a massive number of vulnerable people with very little changing in terms of uh the funding from the province or the shelter spaces available from the province uh we need to refocus back on that that's the main problem here if you have an an unhoused, uh, an unhoused person who can't pay a ticket, it doesn't matter whether the ticket's 250, 500, or 500,000, it doesn't matter. Like they're, they're, if they're not gonna be able to ticket, uh, to pay the ticket, and uh, um, it's just gonna compound the poverty, we're just gonna be back into this cycle here. And I, d I do think it's important that we do touch on, you know, we, we've made strong commitments. The mayor's first motion uh, was to be, to was anti-racism. And, and I think when we look at how the law is en enacted throughout the society and who is funded and who gets housing and who gets shelter spaces and who gets the lash of the law, I think it's important that we take an anti-racist lens to that too. And I think this is part of the reason why I'd like to see this deferred is allow allowing some of that more robust analysis to be included into the August 22nd motion. So if the if the province was going to 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 crack down on us because uh, we didn't create this this additional. Um, I'm not going. I'm not going to say re redundancy, but the re the reinforcement of this of this legislation. They're going to do that anyway. They already sent the mayor a letter with a two week response time. That's completely unreasonable. They've already put our administration working overtime trying to create a response, highlighting many of these things we are doing on uh, already. Um, I don't think we should be making decisions here at this table because we're we're afraid of a, a provincial government or a minister we should be making good decisions that are that are defensible uh, and if challenged in court that we can stand behind so um yeah i i appreciate the mover i appreciate all the debate and uh, and the uh, administration bringing this forward it is very clear they are trying and they are trying to pull out any rabbit out of their hat that they can do here to try and and get a really robust submission to the minister for tomorrow but that is absolutely unfair and ridiculous and, and, and just indefensible to do this to, to our, our council and our staff and ultimately to the affected, the affected people. So take transit, see for yourself, and uh, yeah, support, support your fellow riders. Thank you, Councilor Jans. We have 22 minutes till 12, and uh, just reminding people to be please be j j judicious about the time so we can conclude this item. Uh, Councillor Hamilton. Thank you. Um, I'm not gonna support referral. Um, I, I appreciate the concerns voiced today, but this uh, is also a case where perfect um, may be the enemy of good. Um, implementing uh, this bylaw change does not preclude further work. 
Um, it does not uh, undermine, I think, what uh, Councillor Rutherford is in intending. And I think that it can uh, perhaps lead to a more robust discussion on the 22nd. In the meantime, I think it allows, um, it's I, been identified by administration as a gap that has uh, come up through the COs and EPS. It's also a gap that's been identified by staff. We, um, I think, uh, are are not mindful enough of the people who have to work in this space day in and day out and who do not feel for whatever reason that the code of conduct put in place as it is adequately provides for their safety and their safe workplace and nor do the passengers who have emailed and called and it's turned into a meme on the internet that they do not feel that the code of conduct and the implementation therein adequately provides for their safety. So we, I think there is a robust discussion to be had about um, uh, how, how biases come through in the law, but I, I do not see this as being the return of a loitering bylaw. And one of my fears is that it telegraphs back to the public um, that their concerns, their very real lived concerns, are subsidiary um, to our, our discussions. Um, and, and I do, you know, I wanna note, I do take transit. I took the train here this morning. There has been a marked improvement since February, but something else has improved and it's the weather. And so this problem may um, be alleviating for now, but if we are talking about sort of an enduring um, uh, change and, and if the weather continues to improve and it's 30 degrees this summer, we may see, uh, uh, unin, you know, we may see some of these problems return. Um, so I would caution committee, or not committee, oh, uh, council right now um, to not, again, let perfect be the enemy of good here. This allows us to proceed. Um, it gives us a good foundation to work off of, and uh, it gives a good foundation for the discussions uh, in August around um, further work. Um, so I will not be supporting referral, and I will be supporting the, um, the, the bylaw. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Councillor Salvador. Uh, thank you, and I'll, I'll be brief. I think the work that's coming back in August from Councillor Rutherford's motion will be very helpful in advancing this conversation. Uh, I agree that we need a holistic approach to this bylaw, and I think that that work is already underway. Um, absolutely, I agree that there are significant concerns about the safety of our transit system from all users, um, but I'm also very hopeful about the numerous steps that we're already taking. Uh, and I think, as a number of us have mentioned, we are starting to see uh, real improvement and, and results of those steps. And if the clarity provided in 2B is needed, um, I'm actually okay with that. But I don't see how the concerns that have been raised are not already actionable within the current bylaw as is. Um, and I, I do understand the desire for that clarity, but 2A in particular, uh, I don't feel achieves that and might actually open the door for, for less clarity and potentially some unintended consequences. Uh, to me, this really does seem like an issue with the operationalization of the bylaw, not necessarily the words in the bylaw itself. Uh, so I was <laughs> supportive of the previous amendment, uh, but in the absence of that amendment, I think that the measured approach would be to refer at this time. So I will end there. Thank you. Thank you, Constant Salvador. Constant Cartmel. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sohi. So I um, had an interesting conversation with one of our admin yesterday about how we uh, began the conversation around the the police budget and the funding formula roughly four weeks ago. And administration's advice at that time was, we should use a funding formula. This is our recommendation, it's in our report. And four weeks later, we passed a motion yesterday that said, yeah, we think you're right, we should use a funding formula. Uh, considerable time and effort put in to that debate. Uh, considerable time and effort diving deep into the into the weeds and into the discussion only to come back to essentially acknowledge that administration knows what they're talking about when they bring us recommendations now i don't there's no problem with asking questions for clarity and understanding to understand the vote uh, to to you know 
illuminate and, uh, and uh, discuss particular circumstances or unintended consequences. But what we over here on this side of the room don't have is the benefit of the conversations that our administration is having with our peace officers, with our transit peace officers, who are saying, when we go out there every day into these very dynamic situations, we're finding ourselves in a place where the cohort that is troubling to us is telling us that we don't have the tools to properly move them along. One of my colleagues just referenced that we have less than 200 spaces for well over 2,000 vulnerable people in our day shelters. That's not who our TPOs are talking about. They're talking about that criminal element that has taken up residence in our transit centres. They're talking about having the tool to talk to that gang member that stands behind that vulnerable person that they're taking advantage of. They're talking about people that are engaging in disruptive behaviour not because uh, of, of a, a mental health condition or an addiction condition that they're dealing with, but because they are deliberately creating an unsafe space for the people around them. They are deliberately trying to create chaos. And our employees, who we are supposed to be keeping safe, and the backs of which we're supposed to have, are telling us that they don't have what they need to move those people along. Is there a crossover to the public spaces, the, the other pedways, the other parts of our downtown? Sure there is. Is there more work to be done? Absolutely. Councillor Rutherford's motion starts down that road, but quite frankly, that work is going to have to be expanded to include those public spaces and those other bylaws. But we have heard from our corporate lawyer, our city solicitor, that this is not about people occupying a space that get harassed by somebody in a uniform. This is about people that are demonstrating behaviour that either in the first instance needs to be corrected in that dynamic conversation that says, am I asking a question? Am I advising? Am I moving to a fine, to a ticket? Which happens every single day in these interactions by people that are trained in these interactions. And that it's about behaviour and not simply occupancy. That makes a difference. Passing this bylaw today in these amendments does not interfere with the work. Clearly, this is a bylaw that has had accumulated little bits and bobs as people have seen something in the transit realm over the past however many years or even decades that this bylaw has sat. Does it need a rewrite? Rewrite? Absolutely. But in the meantime, our employees want a signal. And I too have got an inbox full of commentary. I understand that this situation uh, is improving on transit. I have the same observation as Councillor Hamilton that pretty closely correlates to good weather. So do we want that situation to endure? I have consistently said that those that I have the privilege of representing do not want to see vulnerable individuals over-prosecuted, over-persecuted, moved along because of the troubles in their lives or the situations they find themselves in. But they do want to see a measure of accountability return to the public realm particularly downtown, particularly the downtown transit centres, so that they feel safe, so that they know that that person on the platform wearing a uniform actually has the authority to challenge that person creating the chaos to say, how do we have this activity stop? This is an interim measure to give them those tools to reiterate not only to our employees but to those we represent that that accountability exists. So I think we support this now and continue the work later on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Cartmel. Councillor Rice to speak to the referral. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I think my colleague, uh, Councillor <coughs> Cartmel, actually sp speaks on behalf for the three key points I would like to, uh, to speak. Uh, but at the same time, thank you for that. And at the same time, I, I do want to emphasize if we pass this bylaw today, it is the impact on these three parts. So passenger and our peace officer, our employees, our staff, and also the user of the spaces. Because that common concern for the safety. And then actually that is the voice and this bylaw is going to address that concern. And then we care about our people. 
and we care about our public safety. I think this public safety and for this bylaw, yes, it will not address all the issue we talked about here, but at least is respond and in the timing way and to address the public safety specific in transit and the transit system. And so I would like to emphasize again, and so our city is really diversity and inclusive city and re really value the equitable and the passionate message or manner or approach our city send to our citizens. And however, I'm very, very frustrated and for the conversation I heard here and how we can ensure that basic principle and the this equity and this compassion and can benefit for all, not only for part. And that everybody deserve the same principle. I really want to emphasize that. And plus right now, and the summertime is coming, and after two years COVID, I believe our citizens expect we can have the joinable time and quality time and spend, and the public transit prove the law and in this enjoyment. And then plus, our city's economy recovery. Councillor Rice, I am so sorry to interrupt you, but uh, we need, we are speaking to a referral, whether we should deal with it today or in the future. So we need to make sure that we are speaking to the referral only, please, because otherwise, we, we can speak when we come back to, if a referral is defeated, then you can speak to the main motion. But at this time, should we deal with today or um, should we deal with okay, the future? Okay, let me finish my yeah. point and then quickly. And then because my point does relate to referral. And then specifically, and our right now, our city is uh, in the process to recovery. And from, uh, from tourism perspective, we have so many people may want to come to our Edmonton for the summertime because we have so many explore and Edmonton activities going on. And by that way, and there's this urgency and to implement and this bylaw and is actually necessary. So I'm not going to support this referral. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Reyes. Uh, Councillor Hamilton, can you move that we extend the order of the day to finish this item, please? Uh, yeah, I'll move that we extend orders to complete this item. Second. Second by Councillor uh, uh, Tang. Please vote. We have all the votes, Mr. Mayor. Display the votes, please. That is carried, and I will all again remind council members, please, a referral motion only, should we deal it today or in the future, if you're speaking to it. Councillor Stevenson. Yes, thanks very much. Uh, just very briefly, I think everyone is right. I really appreciate the points uh, of all of my colleagues. I do, I also would have been more comfortable had um, Councillor Paquette's amendment uh, uh, been successful. Um, but that said, I do do see the urgency around uh, 2B and I've heard that uh, from many of my constituents and, and our other partners in community safety as well, recognizing that that's likely something that will end up in, in any future iteration of the bylaw. Um, I support uh, proceeding with that now. And again, so I will not support the referral, but. Uh, certainly support all the intent in terms of what the additional work is is meant to do coming back in August. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stevenson. Councillor Paquette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I support this amendment because uh, all the things that everyone was talking about that we need in a uh, bylaw already exists. Um, anything new probably takes some time. Um, in fact, good governance takes time. And frankly, anti-racism takes time and work, unless it's performative. And if it's performative, okay. But it's not for me. Taking the time to get this right is imperative. We can say, let's not let uh, perfect get in the way of good, but this isn't even good. And it's not a solution because we already have the, the necessary elements in the bylaw. They just have to be enforced. 
but there is one component that is deeply concerning that must be explored before it becomes law. And taking a few weeks to do that is good governance. Thank you. Thank you. Can you take the chair, Councillor Paget? I have the chair. Thank you. I would not support the referral because there's urgency to this matter and administration has been asking for this for the last or trying to bring it forward and uh, now we have a bylaw on the on that has been brought forward and we need to deal with today i tell you why you know we talk about you know anti-racism lens absolutely we need to apply anti-racism lens to enforcement absolutely but there are large number of edmontonians using public transit who have no other means of getting around other than public transit. A large number of them do come from racialized backgrounds or indigenous backgrounds. They deserve to feel safe on public transit as well. And we've been hearing from them. I have been hearing from them. You know, we talk about making our public transit a delight to use. I hear from a lot of people, if they have a choice, they will not be using public transit today because they do not feel safe using it. Yes, our system is improving. I give 100% credit to our employees who are out there on the front lines trying to make our system safe. But we also hear from the same employees that they would benefit from clarity that they can enforce the bylaws in a better way to make it even more safer. And I value that input because that input comes from real experience that they are seeing in, the, in, in, in every day in the, their work. So that's why there's an urgency to this. That's why I will not support this referral. That's why I will uh, support the, the, the bylaw. And I will take the chair back. And I will go to Councillor Rutherford to close. Yes. Oh, thanks, Councillor. Um, so today or tomorrow, what, what's the difference? Well, I think that the concerns that Councillor Paquette are the same concerns that I have. And I think that you know, this argument of urgency is very concerning because that is, a, that is one of the tools of oppression is a sense of urgency, a false sense of urgency. And that doesn't mean that I have not heard about how important safety is, both in our transit system, in our downtown, in my ward, in Edmonton as a whole. Absolutely. And we have taken steps in so many ways to address it. We are seeing improvement. And I get the weather compounds, you know, obviously people are not using the transit system the same way in, in nicer weather. I would contend that we would have seen a marked improvement even without that because I saw a marked improvement between January and March when it was still cold. And then I've seen a continual improvement since then. So as was previously mentioned, good governance, especially when it's the highest order, especially when it's the law that we are determining, should take time. And if there is a concern that is so pertinent, like the one that I really hope that people listen to Councillor Paquette and his concern here, that to me is enough to say, let's take two months. Because it's not a, if we don't do this now, we don't care about public safety. And I think that that narrative is a complete fallacy. And, 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 and I get it, um, I get it, it's really important but so is making sure that our law, laws are perfectly imperfect, are not the enemy of good, but also when we know there's a big red flag that we don't pass it anyway because it's the expedient thing to do and it looks good and it feels good because that's what it feels like to me right now. I really hope I have support for this referral back. If not, I look forward to 
the continued conversation that we will inevitably have when my motion does come back in, on August 22nd anyway. But I hope in the meantime, if the, if the decision is made today to move forward with that bylaw, that it does not cause more harm in the interim. And I worry about that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rutherford. So please vote on the referral. have all the votes. Display the votes, please. It is defeated. We are back to the order. So you're back to first reading? First reading, and there were a number of people listed to speak. I'm uh, just waiting for that there, list to appear. There is no new list because those people then spoke to the referral motion. Okay. So you're back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. Councillor Knack. So are we speaking to this now? Yep. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Mayor Sohi. Um, I didn't speak to referral because, quite honestly, I didn't know how I was going to vote until the very end. That was a uh, very good discussion and one that I really struggled with going back and forth as to what the right mechanism is. And... I ultimately said no, and I will say yes to this, but very much appreciating the cautions that have been raised by folks like Councilor Paquette, Councilor Rutherford. I, I, I have the same very large concerns that there's that potential for this to be misused. What gives me hope is that I think we have a very different leadership team here than we did when things weren't going so well with our past bylaw, where it was clearly being used incorrectly. And my hope is that over the next two and a half months, when that report comes back, we get some very detailed breakdowns of how this has been used so that we can make sure that it isn't being used incorrectly, uh, that, that, that what that fear is doesn't in fact materialize, because I think that's a very legitimate piece. And that's ultimately why I'm, I'm willing to support this, knowing that there is a fairly short amount of time between now and then. Therefore, we have, if, if and I hope not, that things go sideways, that we can quickly make an adjustment without having to respond in a different way. Um, because I have heard, and, and I appreciate, like some of, the, like everyone, I mean, I have heard from folks who are, are actively using the system, and there's that fear. Um, there's, in many cases, it's a perception. I think it's gotten much better, but I think there is still a perception that exists that the system is not as safe. I think for some individuals, it actually hasn't been safe. We have had some very tragic events on the system. And so I, I don't want to diminish that. Um, I do worry that this won't change really anything. I don't think this actually solves the, the core problems, but um, if this is truly what is needed to provide that clarity, in the future, I'd like to have a conversation about why that clarity can't, couldn't have existed before. What, what, what did we miss from a council perspective, from an admin perspective, so that staff felt like they had the tools? Because I think the bylaw as written was that. But somewhere along the line, there became a disconnect. Um, and it shouldn't have taken this, in my mind, to actually fix that. But in the short term, if that's what it takes, then so be it. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and, and, and do that. So um, this has been a really uh, tough discussion. But I, I actually, again, just want to thank everyone because I, I have learned a lot. I, I feel it was a very, this has been a long day, long morning for us. But um, I've really gone back and forth throughout the entire day of, of how I was going to approach this discussion. So uh, I'll, I'll support it. Again, just with those extreme cautions, because I think we have a history of how it didn't work, and we need to prove otherwise, and we need to make sure everyone's on the same page on that. So, thank you, Mayor Sir Sohi. Thank you, Councillor Nack, and I will go to Councillor Rice to close. So, <clears throat> thank, thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. 
I, I think I spoke enough okay. and then for all the points for this one. So we can go to vote. Thank you, no Thank you, Councillor Ray. So please vote for the first reading. We're just waiting for one more vote. Sorry, recall the vote, please. Well, I voted incorrectly. I can change that. Thank you. Well, I can't, MG will. Councillor Paquette, are you with us? Councillor Paquette? We're not seeing Councillor Paquette on the call. We'll mark him absent, and we have 12 votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried. Councillor Rice, second reading. I move the bylaw and for the second reading. Con Councillor Prince, please seconding it. Second. Thank you. Please vote for the second reading. <laughs> we have all the votes. We have 12. Display the votes, please. <laughs> that. So just Councilor Rutherford, for the record, can you confirm that we've captured your vote correctly? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilor Rice, for cons we need a consideration for third reading, right? Yeah. yeah. So I move the bylaw 19983 for the consideration of surgery. The second. Thank you, Councillor Principe. This is for consideration only. Please vote. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. Consideration is granted. Councillor Rice for the final reading. I move the bylaw 19983, amending bylaw 8353, conduct of transit passengers bylaw, and for the final reading and third reading. Second. Uh, second by Councillor Principe. Please vote. I, I mean, oh, there we go. We have all the votes, Mr. Rice. Display the votes, please. That is carried. And I saw Councillor Rutherford's name on the deck. No, was it? The wasn't deck, okay. is Got, okay. has, deck is cleared. So just to confirm um, for council on Friday, you have two and a half hours. You have made item 9.6 times specific to accommodate um, some outside guests. Would council like to prioritize what it would like to deal with on Friday so that administration can staff up accordingly? Yep, I think uh, we uh, have 6.1, sorry. Uh, six three and six four that have been bumped, right? So, uh, there's yeah, urgency. and I would say, Your Worship, I, I think that is going to be a long discussion. Um, it's not urgent because we're not asking for any decisions, but I mean, it's it's urgent in terms of we'd like to give you the outlook in this month because yeah. that's our process. But it, it, I don't, I wouldn't say it's urgent for Friday, given that it'll probably be a, a long discussion. It should be, I think, with some good questions and dialogue back and forth to help you. Um, better prepare for the, uh, the the session on the 24th. What are the other urgent items that are left to be dealt with? Uh, not to be totally selfish, but the Edmonton Police Commission recruitment is supposed to be going out. That's a, Council needs to tell me if that's a priority for them or not. I, I would suggest that's a priority. Okay, so we deal with that as a second item? Uh, can do. 
Um, there's a few other bylaws that are still floating around. Council asked us to set up another code of conduct subcommittee. Um, again, we'll defer to you. I just need to know. I don't think that's urgent at this time. We no. have other urgent matters. Or other nine council nine members. Uh, but that's council. I maybe I shouldn't be speaking more of that. So sorry. Nine three. So oh. we need to deal with nine three. So if we can get through nine six, nine three, and nine four on Friday. Okay. Anything else, Mr. City Manager? Yep. So, Councillor Hamilton, can you make them in the order? And then just a friendly reminder, we're going to be laying over all the notices of motion again. Yeah, and we need to find another date. We would For have sure. to find another date. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll make that motion. I might suggest, could we refer, uh, why am I, I'm looking for the code, oh, it's under the bylaw. We have a upcoming council services, correct? Yeah, the purpose of that is actually some housekeeping amendments in the procedures and committees bylaw. There's some other changes related to Bill 21. Sorry, I was thinking code of conduct. The code of conduct subcommittee is wrapped into the uh, city council bylaw because it's all part of the oh, same fun. thing. Oh, fun. Super fun. So yeah. you can't refer it to committee. You can yeah. if you want, but they can't do anything. It would just with bounce it. It'll back. It'll just come back. It'll just, yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. Never mind then. I'll just move the, whatever order. The mayor just said. I like yeah. that. Can okay. you I will then do figure that. that? Okay, Great. good. All right. Can somebody consent? second, uh, second. Uh, the order that uh, Councillor Carter? <laughs> Thank you for seconding yeah. that. <laughs> okay, please vote. Yes, Madam Clerk. In favor, Jans. In favor. We have all the votes. Display the votes, please. That is carried, and we are adjourned till 9.30 Friday. <laughs>